Hello, you lovely lot. So welcome to the uh, 900, the fast, fun and always friendly. <laughs> We're looking forward to season two, week two. And I'm delighted tonight to be in the joint company of Lee Richardson and uh, Rianne Evans. And Rianne, I've got to come to you first. Uh, it's a big congratulations from all of us here at the 900 because you've just last night won your 12th UK championship. Yeah, um, a bit of a shock. Um, but not been a while since I've lifted a trophy, so I'm thrilled with that. And yeah, I'm just happy with the way I played. So. I'm look, I'll be on ye in the semi-finals, but uh, I'll be cheering her on today. Indeed, because on ye will be uh, part of uh, week two, and what a lineup we have! Lee, you're looking fruity. <laughs> At least I'm not wearing the custard to go with it. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> She's going to be trouble tonight. She is always trouble, Rianne Evans. Uh, massive week, though. Uh, world champions galore. We've got uh, the legend Joe Johnson, 1986 world champ. We've got the seniors world champion joining tomorrow. And uh, Rianne mentioned On Yi from Hong Kong, three times women's champion. So it's a really, really tough, strong week we've got. And they got a lot to live up to mm -hmm. after last week. I mean, it, there's a lot of good players in it tonight, and there's some. It's, you know, some of the odds aren't good for some of the other players. So I'll be picking a couple of strange strange bets, I think, tonight. <laughs> yeah, well, that will be the first time. <laughs> Rianne, you, you were with us last week watching on uh, yeah. from home. Man. I think you gave Barry Pinches a, a good shout. Josh Thomond was the player that went through. Yeah, you can never tell. You can't You can't go on form or they, they're a better player than those because in this format, literally anyone can win and it, it proved that in in last week. So, yeah, I was enjoyed watching it from home lying in the bath but now I'm live and I'm looking to the atmosphere is a lot better downstairs with that new setup I think it looks fantastic it's great isn't it it's uh, season two it's the same one frame format but it is uh, definitely more exciting with uh, the live audience uh, for the very first time here at the 900 and of course record prize money if you've never tuned in if you've not watched it before at £10,000 that is the most prize money uh, for any amateur event so uh, we're really proud of that and uh, who's going to scoop the lot well the first man through to the grand final is uh, week one's winner Josh Thomond and no big surprise he's actually the new favourite so let's take a look at those odds then guys Josh Thomond 10 to 1 Michael Holt we haven't seen yet he was a really hot favourite last year but he came to Reading to the Crucible here and he really disappointed Craig Stedman 16 to 1 you've got um, Harvey Chandler 20 to 1 he also played in it last year Stephen Hallworth at 20 to 1 and Gerard Green he's just um, dropped off the tour 20 to 1 and Billy Castle who we'll also see um, later in the season who's stands out there big odds the likes of drago we got joe johnson yeah i, I kind of fancied like, tony drago there even nigel bond a former winner of the shootout so people that you know quick thinking um yeah you know joe johnson's got a chance tonight mm -hmm. you know forget how good a potter he was like because he all right he struggled the first game the first game last year but he, it was only a foul that he committed or he didn't he rolled into the back of the pack but his pink ball potting to, to clear up the second night was tremendous. Yeah, I just think once you get those few good shots, good strikes in, I think in this format, it's it's a really good thing because obviously you've only got 15 minutes. That might be your last shot. Uh, one mistake could cost you the, the whole frame. And yeah, I think with their experience as well, they can carry it through. But I'm, I really want Billy to do well, I do. Yeah, so do I, I've picked yeah, Billy. Yeah. I've picked Billy as one of my <laughs> favourites. But I think, you know, it's bottle as well. Yeah. Under the cosh, because, I mean, just look at the experienced players we had last week. You know, Robin Hull probably took the wrong... He took he took a pink mm -hmm. on into the middle instead of the brown. Um, you, you know, Barry Pinches fell at the... You know, they all Florian fell at the Nussler, same place. how unlucky was no, he? No. Oh, my goodness. It was non-stop. So it's very difficult to pick these matches so I'm expecting more shocks tonight yeah and it's a case of with this format expect the unexpected <laughs> that is for sure uh, let's uh, take a look then at what's in store for you this evening it's week two of season two and getting us underway we'll be looking forward to the uh, first match shortly with George Pragnell and uh, Aidan Murphy but now is the time if you have a fancy for one player to win week two who will be making it to the grand final who are we backing guys well I've gone for Ben Hancorn. Um, he was obviously in it last season and uh, I just think he's a really good all-round player and he has got a lot of bottle as well. And I think Onyi could be... A has a good chance in this as well. She's a nice, steady player, great lung potter, and obviously you need a good lung game sometimes to get in this format. Yeah, and I've gone for Ben Hancorn also because the speed he actually gets down and sights a long ball mm -hmm. is frightening. I mean, I always thought I was quite a quick player back in the day, but I've never seen anybody get down on the on the, on the ball and, and knock long balls in like him. 
so yeah, I kind of thinking Ben Ancorn as well. All right, well they're the um, they're the <laughs> the pundits' picks out of the way. Uh, we've got a few players on there that we, we must touch more on. We've got the best rapper in snooker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, if it's not Neil, it's you. Come on, let me have it. Let me <laughs> to have be it. fair, <laughs> if it comes down to the slag and Neil Foles' shoes are too big for my, for me to fill, um, it, that is Peter Devlin, of course, um, who will be very much pumped. He loves playing on TV. Um, not everybody loves playing on TV, but he certainly does. Definitely. Definitely, his, uh, his character is bigger than life. Um, I'm a, I expect him to win, but I couldn't put my money on him at those prices, so I'll, I'll be going Joe Johnson for that match. But I expect Peter to win. Yeah, and I expect George to do well as well, because I just think he's such a solid player, a lot of experience, and he's so hard to beat, isn't he? Yep. He never gives in. So, yeah. It's, it's a difficult one. You can't choose, really, can you? It'd be nice honest. if one of our legends was to make the grand final. And maybe Joe Johnson, the way he potted some of the balls um, on the second night after he got his head around the rules and everything <laughs> uh, last season. Uh, I, he's practicing so hard every day. He's down there now. He's just, <laughs> he won't he's let on you on the table. <laughs> complete oblivious of the league match that's going on next to him. He just walks straight through them all, get out of the way. See, just, they've all gone. The geezer's down on the shot. It's like normally you say you stand there and wait for the geezer to play a shot. Not Joe just walks straight in. I don't when care about the... you. Like, need my practice. Lee, when you're the 1986 world champion, you do what you want. You can do what you like. It's probably yeah. going in marching in fancy shoes and everything <laughs> we'll be looking forward to, to hopefully having a, a chat with uh, joe johnson in a little while but um here is how it will pan out for night one of uh, week two then and uh, yeah, you mentioned george pragnell um obviously one that was very well fancied last season and he's fancied to win his first match um what can you tell us about george and aiden actually for that matter um, I, I'm not sure about Aiden. I've heard that he's a really good young player, but um, George obviously is a well-known amateur player, is, is top amateur, so you have to back George. Really and I on was that one. I was here when Aiden Murphy qualified, and he was a very cool customer mm. to take for such a young lad. He looks a little bit like Rabbit in the headlights down there now. <laughs> I've just had a quick <laughs> chat with him, uh, but he sat around the corner with uh, Paul Deville, and you know they're they're two young lads, but they're very excited. They're loving the setup. Everybody stood at the bar: Craig Steadman, Ben Ancorn, George Pragnall. They're, they're with Billy. They're loving the look of the new 900. The setup is completely different atmosphere yeah. than being in that room. Yeah, right. It's a lot better. Um, we've got more matches to take a look at. Uh, so that's uh, George Pragnell, Aidan Murphy to kick us off for the quarterfinals. Uh, Joe Johnson, 12 to 5. I mean, is that a bit of an insult, do you think? The uh, bookie's got this right? <laughs> Maybe. I think Peter Devlin is going to win. But at those odds, I think you might, you've got to put your money on Joe Johnson. Yeah, as I say... It, this format can bring up any surprise. Obviously, Peter, obviously a clear favourite. But I want to see some of these pink that you keep on about, these pink balls potted in the middle. <laughs> yeah, I want to see some of the sound of po back of the pocket. <laughs> Smack at the back yeah, of the pack. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, the next match, the Craig Stedman match and Ben Ancorn, that's obviously the toughest one on yeah. paper to call. Um, I've backed them both for my pundits pick, so I don't really mind who goes through because the other one's going to play tomorrow night, so I've tried to be a bit sneaky that's there. That's a good thing for them that they both get a second chance, don't yeah. they? Because it's yeah. a tough draw, that one. And then the last match, um, I kind of think on you, you know, but just because I think she might be a bit used to playing under pressure mm. more than Paul. Mm. But, yeah, maybe, you, know, that's, yeah. that's, you know, that's why I'm going for it, because they're both very good players. Mm -hmm. All right, maybe she's a little bit slow, but I think 20 seconds is long enough. And I just think she might just handle like the, the rowdiness, the cameras. Or she might just handle a little bit better. Yeah, she's, she came up to me and she said, I, I thought about 20 seconds. She thought, that doesn't sound a long time. She said, I actually played a little bit with it. And she was like, actually, you've got plenty of time. Well, we just had a little bite to eat, as a small bite. It was more than a small <laughs> bite uh, before we came in here this evening. And we are actually chatting about it. We were just kind of talking about players like Nigel Bond and Michael Holt that had won the shootout. And then with the 900, you can actually play your own game because it's it's. A a little bit more like conventional snooker with that little bit of a twist that we love so much. Yeah, well, Michael Holt, he went a little bit slow, didn't he? Like overthinking things where the shootout, you have to see the first ball you see and hit it. And uh, it's normally the right shot, your first instinct. And that could be the same for on you today. Yep. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they're, listen, they're good players and they they want it for a reason. They're <laughs> good players and they're quick thinkers. So I still, you still got to give Tony Drago, Nigel Bond, mm. uh, Michael Holt a good, a good, chance of winning this um but 
you know, it's, it's I got it all wrong last week. <laughs> right, well, you're, as I always say, it's a clean. <laughs> oh, we're starting clean. Yeah, no, that's yeah, all yeah. right. I'm an, I'm an expert. <laughs> I can't wait for Draco. Um, I absolutely love watching him play, and uh, we'll be seeing him in a, a couple of weeks' time. Uh, right, they've already kind of let the cat out of the bag a little bit with the uh, pundits' uh, picks, so let's uh, bring them up on screen. We're missing Folsey this week. Um, hopefully, he's watching on, and uh, he is going with. Aha! the most outstanding rapper in snooker, Keisha <laughs> Devlin. And he also likes George Pragnell. And uh, Rianne, just to uh, reiterate, you got Ben, Hancorn and On Ye. Yeah, well, I'll say Craig and Ben, like playing each other, that's, the, that's one of the biggest draws in that group, really. Uh, it's tough for both. I uh, went for Ben because he played in it last season. Craig hasn't, so that's why I've got sort of gone for Ben. And on you, I have to stick with the women power, don't I? Girl yes, power. So. you absolutely. After yeah. beating her in the semi final, well, well, yeah. you're sticking with her now. <laughs> um, ben Hancor made the final last year. I think that's. I think he's got to be in there with a massive chance again. Uh, yeah, but again, he's got the toughest draw in Craig Stedman. You know, Craig's been playing well the last mm -hmm. few weeks. You know, he's he's uh, what's he lost in the final of a tournament? Yeah, and yeah. Um, yeah, you know, he's said he's played more the last three weeks than he has also season so um but again he's he's um he don't like that spotted ball, <laughs> spotted ball he keeps trying to whip the spot right there's some of reviewers have just turned in they've turned us on to what is going on here it's the 900 and yeah things are a little bit different it's not like snooker like you've seen before and they do use the, the spotted ball i mean both of your players um successful players rianne um and with the spotted ball, how distracting is it? I mean, is it kind of like, does it get into your head a little bit or not? Yeah, I, it, it took me a really long time to get used to it. Um, you, you, your, your eyes automatically go to the, to the red spots on the ball. Obviously, you're not used to seeing it. And you normally go, well, I didn't mean to put a spit aside on that, but that's where you was aiming. But for the viewers, I think it's good because they get to see how the, how the balls react and what how the player approaches the shots and things like that yeah. but as a player it is difficult to get used to yeah some players i think some players and struggle it plays a little bit heavier yeah and, and some players do get used to it uh, but i mean when i played it we played we used it for the six reds mm -hmm. and my eyes are that bad i didn't see any red spots <laughs> on it but apparently they were there but no i don't i think some players get on with it and some people don't it's just one of those things and i guess the more you play with it the more you'll adjust to it. Uh, so that is the, the spotted cue ball. Right, check. We got the um, pros pick to come. Everyone's talking about the 900. <laughs> uh, hopefully we'll have your company uh, throughout the night here on Sporty Stuff TV. And Ali Carter has gone with Ben Hancorn. Mark Selby, the jester, has also gone with Ben Hancorn. Some of the professionals, it's nice to get them involved. It's great that they're <laughs> supporting the 900. And uh, Cliff Thorburn from... Toronto is watching, 5 o'clock in the evening, the 1980 world champion. He's going with On Yee and Mark Williams. Ah, <laughs> it's Naf. Is anyone but Lee Walker now? Does that surprise you at all? No, he's brilliant. He is brilliant. I'm hoping he's going to come tomorrow and support him. Yeah, oh, that'd be fantastic. Oh. You know, some abuse from the crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it'd be even better if you could commentate on the match. <laughs> It would be know, nice. Which we'll try and set it up, of course. So they're playing the British Open at uh, Cheltenham at the minute. And if you'd like to get in touch, any questions for the guys, if you've just watched it for the first time, hashtag the 900. Tell us who you're backing, who do you fancy, and uh, keep it clean, obviously, but uh, <laughs> anything you like. Uh, all right, so that is it. And uh, we are very much looking forward to week two of season two. And uh, we've been doing it a long time now, but um, if you don't know the rules, here we go. Players. Eight will play on Monday with the top four progressing to Wednesday. Four new players will join the four Monday losers in a new eight on Tuesday. The top four progressing to Wednesday. On Wednesday, the final eight play down to crown our weekly champion. The format is repeated over eight weeks before our weekly champions contest the grand final. Each night we'll see seven matches around some new and exciting rules. With ball in hand for any foul, the opportunity is there for any player in our 96th field to become the next champion. Good evening, you lovely snooker fans. These are the rules of the 900. A frame consists of 15 minutes, which is your 900 seconds, but players have to contend with a 20 second shot clock. There are no timeouts, but a referee can stop the clock if they think it disadvantages another player. Any foul gives you ball in hand, which allows you to place the cue ball anywhere on the table. If you don't pot a ball, you must hit a cushion. Otherwise, it's a standard snooker foul. If at the end of the frame the scores are tied, we enter deadlock and a blue ball shootout will decide the winner.
And finally, folks, the break off. After you've made contact with the reds, the cue ball must come past the pink spot. And that's it, folks. Don't take too long. Don't miss. Well, don't take too long. It all sounds so easy, doesn't it, when uh, Lee's running through the rules. And uh, don't take too long. Is it the clock? Is it the time? Is that what's going to be potentially getting into the, the heads of our first two players up, George Pragnell and Aidan Murphy, Rianne? Yeah, I think the shot clock is the first thing that people think about when they talk about the 900. And it's the first thing they go, right, have I got enough time? I don't want to run out of time. I don't want to fail. So, yeah, because you don't have to think about it in conventional snooker. In this, that's the first thing you go to. And obviously, don't roll up either. You have to touch a cushion. Don't forget the cameras that are down there and that boisterous crowd that's in tonight <laughs> as well. Then they're both young and they won't have experienced a lot of camera work before. So, Very true, you know. Yeah. It's a great experience bump. for them. It really is uh, to be on TV here with us at the 900. Uh, Pragna's the 8 to 15 favourite. Do you think he's going to be winning this? Yep. Finally? Yeah. That's, that's what I think. Yeah, I'll go with George. Yeah. All right. Lovely. Thanks for now. Thank I'll let you two get into the commentary box and we're going to take a very quick break and we are ready for snooker in just a tick. Good evening, you lovely snooker fans. Welcome to week two, night one of season two of the 900. And I've got the newly crowned this UK champion, Miss Rianne Evans, with me in the Coventry box. Um, it's nice to be sat next to the shirt, the fruity shirt. Oh dear. <laughs> no, I'm looking forward to this. Um, watched it last week at home, but you can hear the atmosphere. It's busy down there and it's a lot for these players to cope with, isn't it? So I'm looking forward to some twitch festing. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and again, people avoiding to sit on that front row. <laughs> um, and it's rammed down there as well. It's such a good atmosphere, but everybody is just sort of sat around that corner to the right. And uh, oh, it's a busy night. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing Aiden play. Obviously heard a few things about him. We know a we know George and he's a well-experienced player now on the amateur scene. So, yeah, it's nice to see some new faces. Yeah, he played very well in qualifying, Aidan. Um, you've got to, got to make George your slight favourite just because he's you know, he's been around longer. He's played a lot more big matches. Um, but has, has the 900 brought up so many shocks like last week? Uh, who knows what's going to happen? No, and this at the start of this frame is actually probably a good thing, settling them down a few decent safety shots here and there, and it lets you get used to the table a little bit, the atmosphere, and but he's got to have a, a decent safety shot here with that red out over the corner pocket. Yeah, he's been a bit lucky to uh, to stick that red over the over the corner and cover it. So is this the first chance for George? turning it down he's played the figure of eight we call that a figure of eight because he's playing around normally the blue on its uh, when it's normally on its spot you're just playing the, the three cushions it's just kind of easier to judge the weight and it, you know you actually cue well when you time that ball right because you have to play with the touch aside and you have to you have to judge it really well otherwise it can look a real bad shot and he actually hit that really well yeah and that was a nice shot from Aiden containing shot yeah, he looks quite settled. He's playing the right shots. So, got to yeah. hit a cushion, don't forget. Oh, every shot you don't pot, a ball must hit a cushion. Get this in line with the green near the cushion. This is a great shot. Yeah, that's covered that side of the table. So, is this the first attempt at a long shot? No, I think he's played the containing dump shot. No, I think he went for the pot there. Do you? Yeah. Hmm. It's a different opinion already. You were just in here to wind me up tonight, I can see. Very cagey, isn't it? They're not wanting to take any chances, do they? Nice bit of safety. It's a 
if you're trying to get that in behind the black. Oh, this, this, is good. A, this is a great shot. Oh, you see the spin on the white ball with those spots on it. That's what I, that's what I love to see the cue what the cue ball's doing. Have you left that red on? At first glance, I don't think so. But he's probably got a free shot into the yellow pocket here, trying to screw back to get somewhere near the black. What a great shot. Have you played on this table, Lee? Only about three hours while I was trying to pop that long blue in the rules. And I've still got no clue what it runs like. I'm surprised I can't see the line of the balls going <laughs> through over the pocket. <laughs> the tram always, line. <laughs> we always used to get those when you practice the same shot over and over. Yeah, the old tram lines. So cues this one nice and sweet and you'll, you'll be feeling good about himself here. It was a tricky one. It was, a, it was an edgy one, wasn't it? And I said this last week, the corner pockets play quite generous, but the middle pockets are very sharp, very sharp. And the amount of balls being missed in the middle pocket last week was unbelievable. So, what have we got here? I'm really surprised he missed that because he wasn't really leaving anything on. There no, was pressure no was off. Yeah, there was no really much pressure on that. That's why I expect him to pop that red into the middle. So we've had five minutes of playing, just the eight points scored. See, that's what you've got to remember. You just can't trickle into the back. I was looking for a trickle into the back of the pack there. But um, oh, see, this is good this thinking. Is, yeah. This is good thinking. Or is he... No, that looks okay to me. Played that really well. Yeah, anything else he was going to have to jack right up and try and get a lot of power into it and screw onto the side cushion with side. It, he's played a good shot there. So's George. Can we have a re rack? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm the wrong person to ask. See, even that shot there, you expect them always to hit that a little bit too hard. You want to be as close to the cushion as possible, but you can't afford not to reach. So you can say both of them are thinking clear out there, aren't they? They yep. haven't... Oh, I thought the pink was in there. <laughs> and the thing is, that's what you don't... You know, you don't want to be smashing these reds, you, you know, as hard as you can to get the cue ball back to the black cushion. Um, they both kept it quite tight, but sooner or later... The here he is, he's jacking up the now. The trouble is with that one off the side cushion into the pack, now there's a red over the middle, so you, it's possible you could leave that. He's played that really well. Oh, my That's word. A great what shot. a great shot. So now... The pressure is on George Yeah, now. because George can't play the same shot because he got it too tight to the cush. So he's banging trouble here now. And like I said, you've only got a few a few of your seconds to, to come up with a shot. Can you, can you... So he's had to go for one. I don't even think he'd get a red to the one over the corner pocket, could he? So it was a great shot by Aiden. So it's Aiden's first. One good positional shot here, and you, you'll be feeling good about himself. Yeah, I mean, it's a table's a oh. So you went the right over the corner pocket like that. They're so hard to, to get out of the way. Isn't Especially it? when the cloth is that slippy and the cubal's slightly heavy. That, you know, when you want it to come away, it reverse spins. So one good pot here. Look, it's good. Wipes its feet, but it's a good shot. So what the ang angle's like on this red. Is it pretty straight? So. I tell you what, he looks calm. He really does. I, I'm really impressed. He's played the right shots at the right time as well. And he's played them well. See, when you're like this, the 20 seconds is plenty of time, isn't there? So just take your time, play your normal, get, make sure, clear thinking. He's still doing his pre-shot routine. Yeah. He, he hasn't taken his eyes off oh, the table. He's, he's 
caught a bit of topspin on that. So, tricky red into the middle. Keep your head still. He looks cool, calm and collected, doesn't he? Very. And slim. So, got to mind the cue ball here when he went potting this. And then he could cannon the one directly below it. He's missed them all on the way down. So, green it is. Is, it, is he playing the green? or He can reach the green, surely. Yeah, he's got to be the green. You don't want to get the rest out. You want your hand on the table, more confident, better strike on the ball. He hasn't played it great though. Well, He's left himself a tricky one here. So Will he go for the long straightish red? Because he's, he's probably not going to leave too much if he misses it. Yeah, well, maybe only the red he's going for. But let's take some cueing. Oh my word. Sweet as a nut. <laughs> oh my word. strikes the ball really well. He doesn't over it the ball, does he? At all. No, he didn't. No, Clean he didn't strike. Over, didn't over it that long shot either. Which which can be easily done. Especially under pressure in a new environment you're not used to. Different tables, surroundings. I've been really impressed. So, and look, look at the balls now. If he can take these, you know, these two open reds. You just can't can't see George coming up with a clearance of where the balls are. I know he's had to play a couple of little tricky shots, but he's kept everything so simple apart from that, hasn't he? Yep, hundred percent right. So, come on, get that rest out. He's, he's cool as a cucumber. He ain't got no rushing to do. <laughs> oh, he needs the extension as well. So he's got the Mark Williams rest out. Just doesn't look like missing, does he? got a choice of reds to play for here. Oh, he's got into that. I saw me he's actually striking the ball really yeah, well. Yeah. So think about it now. What do you do? You don't have to go for one if you don't want. I think it's he wants the break, you, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, you'd like yeah. a big break, <laughs> don't you? This is the problem. But, uh, I mean... He's a heavy favourite. It's a great break of 61. Great break. And George has got to be thinking, how am I clearing up from here? They could do with clipping that red off the cushion. Three minutes to score 53 or 54 points. Again, this format has shown that a new face can can always win, can't they? Uh, you can't just go on on form or look experience. how well he look how well he played, and and look at his composure. You know, he's never taken his eyes off the table. No, nope. and that is the best way to deal with any sort of situation when you're feeling a little bit nervous, a little bit anxious, new experience. Just trust your own cue action. And he's, he's done all the right things. Yeah, I'm very impressed. I, I mean, he looks even cooler here than he did in the qualifiers. And he's even doing your favourite 
running Watch the clock down. Yep. <laughs> Even though he doesn't really have to at this time, does he? That's it. It's done. So there you go, folks. Uh, Aidan Murphy through to the semi-finals. Night one. We'll be back straight after this. Welcome back, and it's great to be joined by the first winner of the night, who was the outsider in terms of the bookmakers at 11-8 to, to beat to George Pragnell. But, Aidan, you look so comfortable in this format. A fantastic break of 61. Just how was it for you out there? I might have looked good, but I didn't feel good. Ah. I felt really nervous. <laughs> was this I, your first time on TV? Yeah, yeah. I've never I've never felt nervous like that before. Ah. Like, I'm usually pretty pretty cool but yeah like that it wasn't good then <laughs> well it was unbelievable for the first time on the tv i mean the the safety shot to start off was brilliant um, but then the long red halfway through you can overhit those so easy yeah, and yeah. you've just cued it in so well we were just we were just we didn't know what to say i mean it was just beautiful snooker yeah, yeah. and you and you looked at home you did like like rianne said she said he's not took his eyes off that table once you know, even when you, you know, when you played your shot, you said, yeah, I mean, it's so important to keep that sort of c concentration up so you know exactly where all the balls are so that when somebody plays a shot, you don't come to the table and you're surprised that a ball's over the pocket yeah, yeah, or yeah. something. And it was, it, both both of your safeties were, were good. But um, the last one, we, we knew we had to go for one because you got them that tight on the black cushion. Yeah, like, yeah. It was brilliant, brilliant, very impressed. I mean, I saw you play in the week two, you only been to one qualifier, didn't you? Yeah, I just went to week You two, just turned yeah, up at yeah. the one qualifier and won it. <laughs> just just win it. And then come here and then make everybody else look... I mean, it was brilliant. I mean, I knew you was cool customer, but that was very cool. Yeah, cheers. Brilliant. And tell us a little bit about yourself and um, your, your snooker background, obviously playing on TV for the first time, but a, a great opportunity to be part of the 900. Yeah, yeah. So I'm from Bristol. I play in a club called the Con Club, and they've given me free play for like the last 10 years. And they've been pretty good to me, so I'm uh. still playing now. But um, Ben's here tonight as well. He's from Bristol. But uh, apart from that, there's not many other, other players from Bristol. Apart from maybe apart Judge from, Trump. Well, <laughs> uh, and Judge, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> forgot about him. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it, it's, it's turning into a hotbed of snooker, maybe. You just never know. But uh, Ben Hancorn, of course, uh, he went far uh, in this uh, tournament uh, last year. Yeah, Who yeah. was with you this evening? Who was supporting you? Uh, my dad and Matt Lancaster, my sponsor. Okay, lovely. Yeah. Great. And what's uh, Dad's advice? I mean, is he is he easy going? I remember I played a lot of sports by the time my dad. I used to try and keep him away. <laughs> oh, he didn't say much. He, yeah, I don't even know if he watched or not. I don't know. Ah. <laughs> and uh, to get through to the the grand final, how how much would that mean to you? Well, it'd be great. Yeah. I mean, it's just a lottery in it. One frame. It's just pretty difficult. You don't. It's a toss of the coin in it, really. Well, as Neil Falls always says, it, it is a lottery. But if you go out and put all the balls like you did tonight. Yes. It's not a lottery anymore. Yeah, you played yeah. great stuff. Congratulations then uh, to uh, Aidan Murphy, the first man through this evening to the uh, semi finals. And folks, if you want to have a bet, Joe Johnson, 12 to 5. Could he be another outsider to win? Peter Devlin, 100 to 30 on. So uh, a hot favourite in our next match. So uh, well done again to Aidan. Ready for more? Let's go back and rejoin the action in the arena. So, second up, we've got Joe Johnson and Peter Devlin. We've got the legend, legend Joe. He, he played two frames last season. One complete halo. He forgot the rules, and his next frame, he, he was potting off the lampshades, wasn't he? Yeah, I mean, second frame, second night. I still remember it now as one of the best, um, especially middle ball pot, pot, I think I've ever seen. What a clearance he done. Obviously, it's a, it's a different format. Not different format, but a different occasion this year we got the table in the main arena so I'm sure he'd want to put a good performance in. Yeah I don't think you lose that wanting to perform in front of the crowd and get those butterflies going. Yeah I mean in practice I watched him a bit and he looked like he's hitting the ball very nice and obviously he's up against the um, you know the legend himself Peter Devlin. The legend rapper. <laughs> he's already had a signed two autographs for rapping today at the club so uh, well he's no been noticed. He's already winning in life today then. He loves the attention, doesn't he? And that's a good thing to have when you're playing in front of the crowds on TV. He just loves being out there, doesn't he? Yeah. Performing. Yeah, this definitely won't phase Peter Devlin in the slightest playing out here in front of this tonight. And he's playing a lot of snooker as well, isn't he? So he should be match sharp. He's, he plays the Q Tour alongside you, Bill. 
Oh, oh close. Yeah, he's very sharp. He won a tournament a couple of weeks ago, our uh, South of England Q Stars event. And then he got to the R16, I think it was in Q Tour Sweden, so he's very sharp. He nearly got Joe Johnson ball and hand there, that was very lucky. And that's another thing when you like see your opponent nearly g going off and you, sh you think that should have gone in. Oh, that's a great shot. Yeah, what a pot that is. You can sort of lose the head thinking, oh, I should have ball in hand here, but it's a, w it's a weird format, isn't yeah, it, to yeah. play in? Because you're watching the cue ball and you're sort of praying inside that it goes in because you've got ball in hand. And when you see it rattle, obviously it's like works against you really in some sort of ways, but now Peter's not that long read in. I mean, he's overdone this a little bit. Again, that could be just a little bit of adrenaline. I think he's still got just the right angle, hasn't he? Yeah, he might be trying to screw off the side of the pack here. So he leaves pink to the middle, maybe black to the corner. Yeah. But he's forgot to pot the reds. And we just hope Joe remembers to hit a cushion. I mean, he struggled last year in his first game. He kept remember, didn't remember to hit a cushion. He kept rolling up to reds. I think he might be going for the double here. So you think that's sort of a shot to nothing, but there's always where you catch that top knuckle, you're always going to leave a shot at the red, aren't you? Yeah, well, I mean, Peter's got a, a shot at the red now where he can, it's natural to come back down for the blue. Oh, he's overdone that. Looks a little bit edgy. I didn't expect this from Peter, to be honest. No, I mean, a couple of shots he's played with the safety and he's missed a couple of reds to the middle now. He does look a little bit, you can see he's way overdone the cue ball on that shot as well. a lovely shot. Yeah, he struck that really well. Uh, I watched him hit a few long balls in the practice room and they was going right in the heart of the pocket. Yeah. It's these sort of shots where you, ta you can take your eye off the ball. I think that's where he's going to struggle, if anything. Yeah, you just want the... I mean, he's on this road, but you just want to clip the other two reds there, to be honest. A couple of reds. He's on it, but it's really missable being tight on the rail, isn't it? You need to keep horrible. really still, and Joe's struggling to keep still on the shot, isn't he? Yeah. Oh, the old body mud there, we can see that. <laughs> I mean, it's tough shots as it is. Peter's got another chance here. You know, I'd have been tempted to play the white there, round maybe off two cushions or on off the cushion back for the black. Yeah, it didn't look to be dead straight, did it, the, the red? I think you give yourself more room for error when yeah. you're playing that shot. Yeah, yeah, you could have, like I say, pinched a little bit of the pocket there. And but he's played a nice little cannon there. Yeah, use the pack to control the cue ball to stay on the red at the bottom. And I think there's another red that goes at the bottom of the pack as well when that, that gets potted. So there's a few reds here to to get his arm going, and get a little break, and then... Yeah, certainly. And this is more like a normal frame of snooker where the balls are situated, so he'll probably be expecting to make a a decent break here. Yeah, well, I'd like to say he hasn't got to do too much with the cue ball at all here. And he's got, like I say, another way to side to go into him. So he's always guaranteed to be on them, these two reds, but he's always leaving himself ampered with a shot. I think he was looking for the normal uh, spider there, wasn't he? Oh. All going on. Oh, he's just left the rest on the ground there. Mark Williams might not see the look of that. So a nice little pace now. He set up himself down, you know, after a few edgy shots early on.
he got into that one again. Um, yeah, I'm not sure he played to be on this red, to be honest. I think he might have played to be on the other two reds. Or the one in the middle. Or the one in the middle, yeah. yeah. Obviously, with the balls in the open, the way they are, he's uh, got a big margin of error. If you keep leaving yourself straight on that black, though, it annoys you, doesn't it? Yes, it's not where you want to be. You're just lucky that there's a few reds to go out here. <gasps> wow. So he's, he's, he's tried to pinch a little bit of an angle there. Where, like I say, he left himself straight on the black. He tried to pinch an angle, and that's where it's cost him there. I don't think there was any need to play on and off the cushion. I think he could have just played for one in the middle there. Yeah, he could have kept it simple there, Ryan, like you say. It was just that shot. He didn't need to put his arm into it as such as he did. Okay, yeah, he's got a little lead, but there's still eight minutes on the clock and the balls are nicely placed. Yeah, I mean, Joe hasn't got to do too much of the cue ball here, just off the two cushions. You know, he's going to be on the red back to the left corner. Just want to do it a little bit cleaner in the pocket, would have been better. This needs good cueing. Do you know, I fancy him to put every long ball. <laughs> it, it's ones where he, I think he takes for granted that he's gonna gonna put. Yeah, that's another lovely queuing shot that was on and off the cushion. Just that little bit of body movement, just pushing the cue ball, isn't he, rather than yeah, hitting it. Yeah, he's through it, he's pushing that cue ball. It's What a pot. Machine. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> I mean Brilliant. Imagine in the A day how good he was at long pots and stuff. It would have been Judd Trump esque. Yeah, okay, he's played that very nice, Rianne. Oh, that's a great shot, yeah. I think he's a little bit straight to maybe open the, the bottom red up a little bit, but. Oh no, he's perfect. Yeah, that was a nice shot. Again, he just landed in the middle of, of the, the yellow or the blue. Yes, yeah, so we need to play a good blue here because he's got to run it. What cue ball, obviously, because there's only one red that goes at the bottom. He needs to make sure he gets past and pink and two reds to leave it on. Well, he's not even played that. He's just played to leave a long red again. It's because he fancies potting every long ball, Bill. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> well, that does, doesn't blame him. Again, he needs to make sure he stays still on the shot. Oh is there any God. chance of him missing a long ball? <laughs> <laughs> this is unbelievable. <laughs> and this black is to take the lead. He's got it. That's a great shot. What a pot. I mean... After that red, the black was more pressure really, wasn't it? This has been absolutely brilliant. Now he's got the balls exactly where he wants them. And, and the reds go. He doesn't have to play any cannons. He's even watching the clock go down a little bit now. He's loving life. Yeah, he's absolutely loving it. I mean, I bet Peter's not. He's just well, overdone it a little bit there. Yeah, he's just let that one go slightly. So, you know, he's got to play a nice little cue and shot here. We so, this is where he's a little bit twitchy if he's going to yeah. try and hold it. He's not trying to hold it. He's just going to go off and leave himself a distance shot. Which, you know I mean, these reds, he doesn't miss these. See, he knows how he's playing. He knows the situation, the experience. This is like a shot to nothing as well, and he's in the lead. He's running the clock down. Yeah. It's all the experience he's got on the table. Yeah, that was a brilliant break for Joe Johnson there. What a visit to the table. There's some highlights in that break, wasn't there, Bill? Absolutely brilliant. I mean, his long pot on there is as good as anything I've seen. Oh, he might have had a nice little kiss there. Yeah, because Joe would have had a nice, just a thin clip off of these reds. Now he's got to be careful. He might just play the dump shot. The only trouble with that shot, he didn't have much else to play, but you're always giving your opponent the opportunity yeah. to play a better shot next, aren't you, and Peter's put yourself in trouble. Peter's got a big target here. Um, I'm surprised he's not allowed to two cushions here, Rianne, to be honest. 
yeah, you play across the face of the blue, wouldn't you? And yeah, back and in back behind and behind the yellow and brown. Yeah. You've got like four ball widths of uh, yeah. to try and snooker him then as well. Yeah, I'm surprised he's played it that way because he could have easily gone in off that way as well, to be fair. Oh, he's been lucky there. The dreaded double kiss nearly oh. cost him. So he'll be playing the, f the fin shot and he's, well, I don't know why he's played it that way. I don't get that shot. No, definitely the white into bulk is the shot there. That's an He would play that in a normal frame, so when he played it there. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if Joe checked. I, don't I thought he was going to go for the red by the pink and yeah. it might have been a plant into the middle. He's, he's done well, yeah. He's done well. He's got away a little bit of that because he could have quite easily pushed this right over the pocket. He has got a shot here, but... He's going to play this with check side off two Screw cushions. off the side cushion. And where's the red going, though? It's close. Well, I wonder if he plays it cushion first, Rian, or if he just goes straight at the pot. Can you see straight for the pot? It looks tight on yeah, the screen. It's very tight on the screens where we're set. Oh, he's pushed this right over the pocket as well. He needs it to get tight on the cushion, it's not. Mm, I'm not sure about that shot. I think I'd rather add an attempt at the pot. Yeah, because he's always pushing that right up and down. It's going close to this pocket. This is a great chance to win the frame now, isn't it? Yeah, this is where you want the balls to clear up. I mean, Pete would have done this a million times from this position. Look at that nice. Yeah, the table's like clean, isn't it? It's not messy. The balls are there to be potted. No yeah. difficult shot. Everything's perfect, even oh, pink. He's he's he don't know how to rest. play this, though, does he? That's not good. If you, if you're unsure like that, why would you not just roll it in and play the green in the middle? Yeah, he could have put a lot less pace on the ball there, and he's been on the. <gasps> oh, he did hit a cushion. Sorry, <laughs> I didn't think he hit a cushion there <laughs> when he was. Uh, you getting excited? Yeah, there. I didn't see the ball at the cushion. But Joe Johnson can play a nice little shot. He's got a big target here. If he can double the yellow off and down and leave the white in the yellow sort of pocket. He's a brown to come to his rescue here. Yeah, he sort of dragged that rather than screwed it, didn't he? Yeah. He sort of didn't get through the cue ball at all. Oh, we can see it. He can. That's a great shot. Uh, what that a shot that is. That is a good shot, yeah. 55 seconds left. So he only needs this and the brown to take the lead. <gasps> oh! I guarantee you that wouldn't have went in if it was me playing it. Well, that should be enough for that. Joe will be gutted there though, wouldn't he? Yeah. He had a great chance. He had a great chance. I mean, you know, even that red at the end, I thought he might have tried to come off the cushion and tried to pot it. But there we have it. Peter Devlin will be in tonight's semi final. You're watching the 900 here on Sporty Stuff TV and the second winner joins us in the studio this evening. That is Peter Devlin who has got the better of Joe Johnson. We saw some great magic from Joe. Just what was it like playing a legend? He was, he was awesome, I'm not going to lie. Like the break he took out, I didn't expect it. Not from him, not from anyone. You know, he took the balls really nicely and I was just sort of 
slowly edging towards my seat. I started off standing up thinking I'm, I might get a chance. Then I started sitting down. Then I was like, I'm not getting another shot here. Yeah, but you thought he was going to get another shot and he kept leaving himself all those long balls. You think he's got to miss one soon, but they're yeah. going right in the heart of the pocket. I watched him practice earlier and he was banging them in straight in the middle. And It was damaging say, me. It was it a was. clean break, wasn't it? But you both had a couple of chances then. Yeah, yeah. And obviously that green nearly missed as well. It was missed. the heart rate. <laughs> I've got asthma, so I'm blaming that. that I can't excuse. breathe. If anyone saw me going, <gasps> it's because I can't breathe. I've got a medical condition. No, um, it was it, there was there was actually so many times. I think twice in that match where either the time caught me out because I couldn't reach or because I couldn't find the right rest at the right time. Whether it was the spider I needed and I had to chuck it on the floor, or I couldn't reach with the rest, so I was having to use my left hand, which obviously wasn't gonna wasn't gonna end well. I think you left the rest on the floor at one point. As well, well, it's not my job. I am running around. I've got other things to do. <laughs> But no, there was a lot of craziness going on in that match, and I think that was one of the most fun but horrible matches to be involved in. <laughs> but that's why we love this format, the 900. It is, that's why what I love it brings it too. out, isn't it? It's fantastic, isn't it's it? Brilliant. It's good for us viewers to watch it. It's my favourite <laughs> thing to watch, it really is, because you get all the drama of, of shootout style snooker, but you get like more mistakes and more fun. It's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. A lot of head and shed moments, uh, which brilliant. we love as viewers. I know you've been uh, staying up late, uh, tweeting us in, uh, so you're really enjoying it. I really did, yeah. yeah. Which I is watched great. the first week. Um, Josh, my good friend, won the first week. I don't know how. Um, <laughs> shout out to him. <laughs> and uh, yeah, no, it, it's great to watch. It really is. Love it. And how's life with you off tour? Are we trying to get well, back it's not on? It's off tour. <laughs> Are you trying? Sometimes it can be, though. <laughs> yeah, I am enjoying playing a lot more events. You know, I'm, I'm all over the world now, as opposed to being on the pro tour in COVID, where it was just same place all the time. So I'm enjoying the traveling and competing. Um, I was missing that as a pro. Um, but it's got its positives and negatives. Some, you know, it means you're losing more often as well. Mm. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's good though. As long as I'm playing, I'm happy. But okay. it keeps you sharp for when you do get that chance to get back on tour. That's right, well, yeah, yeah. And Absolutely. we're happy to have you here at the 900, of course, uh, biggest prize money in amateur snooker, so you're still up for grabs, of course, the <laughs> £10,000. Uh, well done to uh, Peter. Congratulations uh, to Peter Devlin. He's through, and uh, he'll be playing Aidan Murphy, the winner of our first match. And now the next quarter final, it's Craig Stedman up against uh, Ben Hankorn. Uh, two very well-fancied players to go all the way this week. Let's see who comes out on top as we rejoin our commentary team. Welcome back, folks. Oh, what a what a game that one was, was, Billy. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. I mean, it had its... Well, Peter got in front with a nice sort of 30-odd, and Joe Johnson made a unbelievable 40-odd with pot on every long ball in sight. Yeah, back and forth, back and forth. Brilliant. I mean, two brilliant frames so far, Lee, tonight. Yeah, you can't argue with the standard tonight. I mean, uh, Joe's long potting. I mean, I knew he was going to take that. Uh, the long blue and screw back for the long red. Yeah, I mean, on the screens it looked easy just to roll it in and he was going to be on a red below the pack, but he just fancy leaving leaving the long red. That's what I called out there. I, sa I said, why don't you roll it in? Anyway, enough of that one. What do you think? Who's, what's going to happen here, oh, Billy? This is a tough one. Obviously, <laughs> um, two mates of mine, Ben and Craig, going head to head. I mean, you can it's a toss of a coin, really. It's who your preference is or... I mean, you know, it's a toss of a coin, it really is 50-50 game. See, so yeah, I got both of these as my pundits pick, because I, I just thought, you know, only one's going to go through this sort of this first round, and then the other person will be playing tomorrow, so I thought it maybe gives me two bites of the cherry. Just an attacking shot from Craig. Yeah, he's getting the ball straight open. You know, I think Craig's been itching to play in this. Even when he was a pro, he was like, last year he was up watching it and tweeting every week ringing you with the, with the pics and yeah but he's got he got two new kids now he's got two little babies and he said he's had to he goes to bed at nine o'clock at night <laughs> normally he's putting his shirt on and going out on the town but now he's he's going to bed at nine o'clock in the morning and watching the nine nine hundred sorry nine o'clock in the morning nine o'clock in the evening and watching the nine hundred the next day while he's baby bottling the kids <laughs> baby bottling that's a new one, Lee. <laughs> nah, these are two two top players. You know, two of the favourites probably to win the whole thing if they get through. You know, it's a tough group as it is. As look, George Pragnall's gone out tonight already. He was a top, top amateur. You know, wins a lot of amateur stuff. And uh, he never really got a shot tonight. It no. shows you how tough the format is. Yeah, but Aiden didn't find it tough, did he? He queued it like Brilliant. a dream. Well, he just queued followed it. on from the qualifiers, Lee, didn't he? You look like a dream, mate. Same as Marcus, followed it on from the qualifiers. These players are sharp. Yep, yep. So I think we've got to 
got to realise. These have already been out there and done it and like played out in this on this table in the sort of format of people watching, so they're used to it. Yeah. So that's the first safety shot that's gone wrong now from Prey. So a chance to well, put ben him in. Ben doesn't want to hit this knuckle. No, that's He's fine. Like, yeah, Craig can play just an up and down off that red there. Yeah. Ben just played. Yeah, he'd like to get the block on the green if he could back down. Even this game here, I mean, whoever gets in amongst these balls there could make a one visit or a tidy break here. The, you know, these are players that are top, top players. You know, Craig's only just come off the tour, same as Ben. You know, and they're playing in tournaments week in, week out. Craig's been doing well on the Q tour as well. You know, he got to the first final in event one. You know, he won a seniors event in the hole. Well, there's a path through to this red over the yeah, corner, but you've got to get the cue ball out on a colour. Yeah, you have to do some work here. Oh, what a shot that is. That's a brilliant shot from Craig. He just like to have been a little bit easier on this pink. He's got a shot at it. That's not easy. I don't think he's turning it down, is he? Well, he's looking at the angle now, so... Yeah, he's had to play around with two or three cushions there. Oh, is, is he playing safe? He is, he didn't fancy he didn't fancy no. putting all his eggs in that one yeah, basket. It's a, it's a tough shot that um leaf. Yeah, it come around with two or three cushions as well. You know, there's a lot going into one shot. Oh, he's hit a couple of shots thick here, Ben has. I mean it's okay because the table's absolutely rapid. You know, you, you know you're by yourself, you don't feel that great if you hit a couple of shots a bit thickly. No, it's it's like every snooker player's nightmare. They, no one likes to hit it thick, Billy. No. Oh, he's oh, he's had a massive fluke. And what's he going to get on the brown? Is he going to get a nice little kiss? No. No, but he could be in behind the yellow here. He's not rolling up though, is he? He's in behind the yellow, Lee. <laughs> See, that good bit of fortune now has got Ben in a horrible position. The way snooker works. And you can see it on his face. do fancy both of these players to be here on the Wednesday night though Lee yeah I mean see, I tell you what <laughs> he don't mind that shot no, you don't well, want that back Craig's had himself a little bit of fortune there, but he can clip this red into the middle you know because he wants to plot that red on the left corner pocket as well Well, he's not took that red on, Billy. No, he's played a nice safety shot, though. Yeah, Craig's got a good all-round game, Lee. First time I see him, I was in the under-16s England international team at Pontins, and he was in the men's team, you know, and I thought, wow, what a player he is. Yeah, he's been around a long time. A long, long time, yeah. That was when I was a kid. He was a top, top player back then. Been lucky enough to grace a match with him on the main tour as well. Some good safety here so far. They yeah. both played, you know. Ben's sort of been in trouble every time he's come to the table, really. He keeps flying on the way back, though. Yeah, doesn't want to hit this one thick, though. No. He's done it again, you see. Yeah. But he might have got away with this. You know, he knows he's hitting them shots thick. Wonder if he would have a tempter at this red. Could be pushing another red towards that corner pocket. He needs this white to keep travelling. Or he's going to leave Ben the opportunity yet. And the black does go. Well, on our screen it looks like it goes anyway, Lee. Oh, it goes now. Oh my word. 
You don't mind a kiss like that, Billy, do you? Wow. Great opportunity here for Ben. So I think the middle red of those cluster of five goes into this left hand back pocket, yeah, Billy. He's got a red here, he can play the rest and be black on the black. I know he's got an easy red here anyway. I mean, he's going to be straight on this blue where it could have been absolutely perfect on the black. You know, he played the red into the right corner pocket there. Yeah, he wanted to be top sided at that blue. So you know he's shot, that's obviously have to leave himself a mid-range shot after this. But he's such a good long pot, or he's mid-range, yeah, he, he is, he's not particularly worried about a mid-range shot. No, but you don't want to leave himself in that position when you could have been... No, I was surprised he wasn't above the blue. So that little six-inch butt that that they put on the bottom of their cue, Billy. Does that change the way the cue throws? Um, not them sort of shots, I don't think it does. I don't really think it makes much difference because you're only, you're only looking for an extra few inches on the shot. Not quite it, though. No, he's under it that little bit. She's starting to, you know, when you start to lose the white ball, it's so easy just to lose it until you miss. So, wants to be chipping this red in. Nice shot, two cushions, a little bit of left. No, he did have a little bit of left. Well, that's not great. Yeah. And he can't roll up, remember? <laughs> I mean, in a normal snooker frame, it wouldn't be overly bad. <laughs> no. So, 29 points in it. Five and a half minutes left, Billy. So, there's plenty of time still. Yeah. I think he's going for this. Yeah, he'd be tempted at this one. Oh, I tell you what, he's hit it all right. Yeah. The double kiss was friendly. Yeah, he's got a one little one there. Yeah, it wasn't a bad shot he's played there. Gotta make sure he gets cover on this red. Yeah, that's a nice shot. So Cray's gonna play this red where he's gonna swing around the cushion there. Well, I kinda think he sort of played to move it, didn't he? So there yeah. was always a chance. Yeah, the red was always going towards that red, so I mean if he takes this brown on that's a big shot naturally coming back down for this red. This is big. Everyone's been hitting these thin. And the E has struck that beautiful. Oh, he could have done with a little bit of left, on, a little bit of right on that, couldn't he? Yeah. Kevin, those reds. I mean, now he's got to take this red on with the rest. Oh, no, he's... He reach keep forgetting how tall I am. Yeah, if you do pot this, you know, we might have a new favourite for the frame. Oh, he's hit it thick. He kind of butchered that one a little bit. A little bit of movement there as well. Yeah. yeah that was a he knew that that was the shot. Yeah, I think with the brown, though, I mean, if he'd have hit it with a lot less pace, he'd have been guaranteed on the red to the corner. He played it in a way where he was so half not leaving too much. Oh, Ben thought he missed that. So he's the wrong side of the pink here. Looking at the clock. Nothing wrong with that, Billy. No, of course not. Use all your seconds if you're in front. This looks a nice shot. It was a nice path, wasn't it? Yeah. Let's play that nice. Seven. Yeah, just using all the seconds up here. Oh, 
Oh, Ben. Oh, is there enough time, Billy? Oh, he's, oh, he's got the snooker. Go for the he's got to play for the double. Oh, that plant might have been on you, man. He's got it. What a shot. There is enough time on there. Is there? Well, it's going to be tight. Well, 20 foot, well, we could have a dead up. We could have a deadlock if he takes three reds and three blacks. Oh. Give us a deadlock. Come on. Oh, oh, you okay? I think he's too... St I mean, I don't know what he's going to play, but... It's just off straight the wrong side, I think. Oh, it's dead straight. Oh, he's played this beautiful. Oh, what, what a shot. That's a great shot. Shoot that unbelievable, that shot. So hard to play them shots. So, screwing up for the pink into the same pocket. Oh, he's going to need the red now. There is still plenty of time. Touch your right hand side, make sure of the make sure of the black. Look at this red, just drop it in, just gives you the best chance. Yep. He's not punching this. Just drop just it. Roll it in. Just drop it. <gasps> he's what punched a it. Way he's played that. What a great what shot. A shot. Even even a round of applause from Ben there. Yeah, he's going to be kicking himself, Ben. Cause Craig just got to use all his seconds. Don't rush, Craig. Wow. He should have used all of them seconds. All there. of them. All of them. Slow down. But the adrenaline's pumping. Well, he's six points in front, so Ben would need three pots after... Yellow, green, brown. Now he's using them. Let's figure out a shot where you get that yellow onto you know, a cushion. And <laughs> oh, Craig can't believe he's going to win this frame from where he was. Has he got the? Has he got the snooker? Oh, he's left it. I think there's enough time, you know. Oh, not now though. You don't need to so there you have it, folks. Craig Stedman is through to the semi-finals, uh, and we'll have him in the studio straight after this break. Well, we've had plenty of drama and uh, high quality so far tonight at the 900. And congratulations to Craig Stedman, who joins us in the studio. Well done, Craig. Thank uh, you that very was much. Um, edge of your seat stuff for us, anyway. What was it like for yourself? Yeah, it was pretty tight. Um, I think I flew one early on, you which did. is not like I'm not a flute <laughs> since like last June or something. You were leading um, two 0 at one point. But yeah, I had him in. A, I had him in a snooker. I played a good little snooker. He hit it. I think he, he left it safe. He left it safe, but Billy did call. There was oh, one in the you could have you could have nicked one in the middle, but you played a broad, you played a great safety shot. Thanks. You played full in the face off the thing. But what, I mean, did you not see the? Did you not uh, see well, the? You haven't got enough things. time to. <laughs> we have got enough time. Twenty seconds is enough. But sometimes <laughs> your mind goes a bit blank. So I was I was that disappointed. You didn't leave me something simple. <laughs> I know. I know. I just got down and played safe. Um, but then I left the I left like the plant or the red, and he's potted it, clipped a few balls, landed good on the black. And sometimes in this format, you need something to land in your lap. And it did, and I thought he was going to win. Yeah. Um, and then sort of last chance, and I had a double to go at with a yeah, couple of minutes left. Yeah, but he's missed the black off the spot. He missed the black off the spot. He's won. Yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah. so if he doesn't um, miss that, you've got no. No, chance. no, no. It's all over. But like I say, in this sort of format, if you can pot a few balls and you get a little bit of help along the way, it's, that's all you need. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I kind of did it the hard way there, but. Nice double, and, uh, uh, you know, I don't well, think you, I've played that quick for a while. <laughs> you said it yourself, Greg, you know, if you can pot the balls and get a little bit of help along the way. Um, yeah, that's what and, you need. And that happened there. You mentioned the, 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 the time and everything. Are you generally a, a quick thinker when um, you're out there, do you feel? I like to think, I could, you know, I've been playing long enough to, to, you know, I think I've got a quick brain, but 20 seconds is enough, I think, for anybody. 
Um, but it is because the format's different. It feels like it's a bit quicker than 20 seconds. Well, it's not really, but uh -huh. it's quite difficult when you're out there to, to you know, to, to feel like it is 20 seconds. You feel like it's about 10. Um, but no, I don't think the shot clock will be an issue for many people, really. 20 is But 20's you said, enough. like, this time of night now, you're normally tucked up at 9 o'clock in bed. bed. <laughs> 9 o'clock, half 9 in my house, the lights are out. I had to go and have a snooze before just to come back and play tonight. <laughs> have you got another new arrival in the house? Yeah, we have, yeah, yeah, little girl. So uh, we've got a two-year-old and a nine-month-old. Oh, wow. So it's pretty busy. Yeah, well, I like can I said, imagine. the lights are out, 9 o'clock. We're done. <laughs> so to play at 10 o'clock is a little bit different for me. <laughs> Listen, and we feel like we're just starting our day here. And suddenly you're thinking, wow, it's midnight. Uh, but you are a big supporter of this tournament. I know last year you came here and, and joined us. And yeah, it's I know brilliant. You, it's good to have you here. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I watched a lot of it last year. I think I think the format is really clever. How there's kind of no dead rubber games. You're either playing to get through to the Wednesday. You're playing for a few quid on the night. Obviously, if you're going to progress in the event, you know, you can't read too much into players' pedigree and stuff like that with a, with a quick format, but it helps if you can get more games on the table. So I think it all works pretty well. Yeah, I've really enjoyed watching it. And, you know, I, I would like to say I enjoyed playing it. If I lost, I might have been storming out. But, um, <laughs> no. no, I enjoyed it. It was all right. It was good. It was played in, in, in great sport. Ben as well. I mean, he was yeah, he's a good lad. I'm, you know, we're we're similar age. You there. Um, we've known each other a long time. Yeah, he's, he's a good lad. I know, as I said, you sported it last year. Um, how are you with um, not being on the tour now? Are you at peace with it? What's your um, aspirations at this stage? Yeah. <laughs> I think, obviously, with the arrival of the, the two new ones and, and the lack of tournaments since COVID, which is nobody's fault, not blaming anyone for that, I, I just wasn't playing enough. And, you know, you get found out if you don't play enough. It's as simple as that. So, you know, I decided to have another crack at, you know, getting back on the tour. I, don't, I, I wouldn't like to just fizzle out, you know, because things have changed in life. We're getting used to all that now. So there's no sure. excuses. You know, I'd like to get back on the tour. But if there's tournaments like this to play in and there's other events, you know, every other week, then, you know, it's fine by me. Listen, your time will come. You'll be back on hopefully, tour. For hopefully. us, um, you're our um, gain at this point. Keep your fingers <laughs> crossed, <right? laughs> Talk about reading into pedigrees. The bookmakers made you favourite almost to win this group um so really? uh, we'll, yes <laughs> who will he play though is the big question in our next match we've got um on Yi, three times women's world champion from hong kong 13 to 8 up against the current english amateur champion in paul Vils. this is a, a real hot match to look forward to so let's get to the floor and let's get to first up brianne evans in the commentary box yes thank you rachel so we're on to our fourth match and it's on versus paul deville uh Anyi, really good, long potter, steady player. She's worried about the shot clock, but I think she'll be fine under the... If she gets in amongst the balls, pot a few early balls, settles down. Same for Paul. Great young talent. He's all to play for. And uh, the shirt has joined me in the comms box. Did you miss me? Always. He's a great lad, Craig Stedman, isn't he? I mean, he's just definitely one of my favourite boys off the tour. Can I just say, how the hell has he won with that tip? Uh, how, how can you pot a pot of ball? It's like Is a it? fruit pastel. <laughs> I haven't <laughs> seen it. Oh, I wonder what you lot were talking about. I thought you were just talking about the shape of his head. <laughs> no, that was you. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's more like a Malteser. Mm -mm. Right, who do you fancy here then? I'm, I know you think you're going, oh my word. That is a, a some, who's put that on there? just been shown a picture of Craig Stedman's tip. It's lopsided. I think you, whoever has done it was in a rush. <laughs> He's let his kids have a go. <laughs> oh, that was a big shot there to play so early on as well. He sort of got away with it, I think. No, this is very potable. Stretching a little bit. Yeah, but there was no hesitation. She got straight down on it. I tell you what, you can't hit it. Shot. You can't hit it any better than that. She does like to put a good, clean, long ball, though. I think that's one of her strengths. Yeah, I think twenty seconds is long enough for her. You know, I think she, you know, she knows her technique. She get, you know, once you've made your mind up, you get down on the shot. You go through your motions. And she's a hard worker, so she'd have probably put the practice in in th this sort of situation and gone, right, it takes me seven seconds when I'm on the shot, so I've got ten seconds or so to w line it up and, do you know what I mean? Yep, yep. Sort the shot out, so she'd have probably worked all that out as well. It's another good shot. Just a little bit too much side on the, on the cue ball. 
a bit close to the cushion. Yeah, I think she can drop this in and land on the red above the black. Just need to keep really still and push that cue through in a straight line. Well, that's what she's done. There was no movement there. No. That's a great shot, well controlled. And you forget she has a lot of experience. She's, she's played in the Hong Kong Masters Invitation event on TV. Massive thousands of people watching in the crowd. She, she's won multiple world titles. She's used to winning. She knows how to win. What's happened there? Did that red not go then? I thought she was on that red yet. Or maybe not. Well, a little bit of a shock. So she just um, she hit the blue a fraction too hard. But yeah, I... I sort of said earlier on, I, I kind of feel like she might be favourite in this match just because of the amount of time she's had to play in, in front of thousands of people and live on the TV. And, you know, and Paul, he's a great player, but has he had that sort of exposure and, you know, are you used to it and there's people dropping stuff behind you? <laughs> that misses a green, this is a, a good shot. The crowd like that one. Yeah, they did. And I think she'll have a lot of support as I well. I think so. Yeah. I think so. You know, you know, she's the only uh, one lady playing tonight, so you're going to bound to have a couple. That was always the danger playing that shot there. Yeah. So, another chance for Onyi. nicely judged these balls look open but they all seem to be covering. a little bit awkward <laughs> yeah they're covering each other you, f you feel like this is a great chance we should win <laughs> <laughs> but they're all a little bit awkward Why? I think she played for the the one red second underneath the pink yeah I think I might have played for the red in the middle of it yeah. where she was and then played the brown. Sort of try and tidy the table up a little bit. Oh, she's had a little bit of check side on that. Which yeah, squares. We all play it that yeah, way, yeah. don't we? It just makes the yeah, pot it a helps, bit easier. It helps with the side, doesn't <laughs> it? But helps with the pot. But I fancy for this blue, though. Yeah, she just wants to... What's she like with the rest? Decent. Very solid. Okay. Well, yeah. You heard it here, folks. 12 time UK championship said she fancies her for this pink uh, for this blue oh my word clean as a whistle she didn't run that in <laughs> she won't be used to those uh, the pings going off though because you've got five pings and then you run out so she's in there on like two pings She looks comfortable. Yeah, big shot now. She takes this pink onto the middle. Big shot. It's a good shot. She didn't have much to do with the with the cue ball there, so she could focus just on putting on putting the pink. It's a great shot. Still a lot of pressure on that one though, because oh. you are leaving everything. Exactly. Yeah, but it helps when you haven't got to do too much with the cue ball. Can she just landed a little bit awkward again? Can she get into the... She found a little gap here. Does the black go? No, the black doesn't go. Oh, that oh. was a lovely couple of kisses there, wasn't it, to help that? I don't know where all these people signed up for these kisses. Don't get jealous, no, I Lee. <laughs> extremely. <laughs> it's all right, I get the kisses, I just don't get the pots. Unlucky, that. Is she on this red? She's walking around. She looks. Yeah, she is. Can she avoid the cannon on the red? Yep. Played it well again. Yeah. Nice She's got shot. the pace of this table. She's uh, 
Are you allowed to practice on this table or not? Not this table, no. just the just the side rooms with that. Well, you you get the cue ball, you get spotted white, so you can get a good feel with that. But the slide on this table is, uh, you know, it's it's caught a lot of people out. Even when I even when I was doing the break off, I I. I I pushed it that far into the into the pack that I screwed onto the side rail instead of it in the black cushion first, so it can have your it can have your pants down for sure. Yeah, normally you can line the pot up as normal, but as you say, it's the reaction of the table that can catch you out. All right, she's got a forty-three point lead. Still seven and a half minutes left, though. Yeah, but she could do with this pink in. Yeah, it's good to pot it. Yeah. yeah very nicely and you know Paul Deville is in having the chance of being bageled no this is the shot what do you do here do you go for it well you don't have to but she could screw across the face of the other red leave the pink in the middle and you'd only be leaving a thin chip she'll on be that red it. oh my That's word a great shot she is striking the ball really well that was a great shot and you know sometimes you know when it's your night when you do that you're playing half of a shot to nothing and you landed perfect on the brown <laughs> yeah so anywhere on the black cushion would be nice you're open for a got little the gap. kiss has she got the gap no nope. she's got the kiss oh so and so I won't be moving the red that's stuck in the black just in case no nope. I'll be Chipping this red onto the cushion. Yeah. Yeah, she's playing all the right shots, Ryan. That was a great break. That was and a she's great. She's playing visit. very well. So 54 now, still six minutes left. I mean, that's not a, a lot of time. Sort of opening the black up here, so you, the figure of eight shot maybe in behind the green. She caught that a little bit thick. She got by the green though. Yeah, and she's managed to put a, the red safe, so. Sometimes it's about those little flicks, not big fluke shots or anything like that. It's the little nicks here and there that make the big difference because it winds your opponent you up know, even you more. Know. You're just like, oh, oh. Oh, that was a great effort. sometimes those little flicks just they just they eat away at you and you're like oh, I didn't now I'm bridging now I'm on the cushion now snooker I can't see that one right that's the first mistake we've had from on again the same shot but on the other side she's catching it a little bit thick again the side playing with the touch aside it's going straight into the yeah the object ball oh. So just under five minutes left yet. Fifty-four down. See this is where she's normally quite methodical. She'd have probably taken another four or five seconds in a normal format. Yep. And eating the cup and, and down try, a little and bit. And try not to try not to be bringing this one off. But she's played it really well. Yeah, very nice shot. Is he going to go for this? Oh, I tell you what, he's hit that well. <laughs> he didn't have a lot of choice because he's running out of time to score 54 points. He's done well to get back out there and he didn't even seem to hit it hard, did he? He queued that really well, was unlucky there. But yeah, this is the sort of chance you want. Already 54 points up. Just a few more pots and he's end of frame. Yeah, I don't think we've had a bagel this season yet. Have we not? No, I don't think we had one last week. Pretty sure all the games were pretty sort of close. See? Girl power. She has played well. Yeah, you, you can't take anything away. I mean, she's not quite there yet, but it's been a great performance. She didn't win the UK Championship this week, though, did she? No. She lost in the semi-finals, I think. 
no, it's been a great performance. From I thought she would win this game, you know. Yeah, you said from the start you. Yeah, I kind of the experience liked it. of the pressure yeah. and things like that. And she's and she's nailed it. Yeah. She nearly played the perfect frame. Yep. Paul went for a shot. One mistake and he virtually lost the frame. And I think it's helped having like a general frame, not not a messy frame. Yeah. As well. Yeah. Well, I mean, those reds were everywhere around there. They, it wasn't. It wasn't a. It wasn't an easy break. I mean, like nip and took like eight yeah, points yeah, yeah. here, eight oh, points yeah, there. Yeah. Whereas if you make twenty, thirty, forty, you, you feel more comfortable. Yeah. Generally, if somebody makes a, a bigger break, the balls when they when you come back to the table, they're still all you know all right. But um, no, she's uh, she's completely walked this one. I don't think he'll be coming back to the table unless he fears the bagel. Is he going to do it? He doesn't oh, no, care. He it. doesn't care. So there you have it, folks. That's our lineup tonight. On Yee's through to the semi-final, and we'll be back and have a little chat to her in the studio after this break. Welcome back to the 900, and tonight it is uh, the second uh, week, of course, of season two. But, um, well, the big guns, they're coming, and they're showing up in great style. Our three times world champion, Anyi, is through, and a brilliant performance. Congratulations. You just Thank look so you. cool and comfortable. <laughs> no, really, I was rushing, and I love, I dropped my chart, actually. <laughs> Lucky I got a spare one, because I knew I always dropped my chart. See, Anyi is always well prepared. Look, spare chalk. <laughs> yeah, my coach also remind me. Yeah, got to give her Give him some credit. <laughs> well, actually, let's give him some credit. Uh, tell us who your yeah. coach is and how long have you been working with him? Uh, how long? A uh, few years, actually. Too yeah. long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, seven years. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he did give me a lot of advice, especially because he is a former professional. So he gave me a lot of advice on the shot selection and how, like, like, like the uh, tournaments here. Mm -hmm. He gave me a lot of advice, how, like, uh, to see how opponent to play. Sometimes they they are slowing down because the call is going to finish. Yeah, yeah, and. And remind me to have a spare chart too. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you're getting good advice by the sounds of it. Now, you two played only at the weekend. Yeah. I'm not too sure how Rianne V2 uh, play, <laughs> playing as well as you did tonight. <laughs> we'll talk more about that one, yeah. <laughs> That's what Billy, Billy Castle said, that I don't know how Rianne V2 on you. She's playing so oh, good. You was awesome. Yeah. Your long party was yeah. good. I don't even remember how many times she won the World Championship. <laughs> Twelve. <laughs> Twelve. Oh. Oh. Ridiculous, yeah. right? <laughs> uh, but yourself, you're three times World Champion. Um, you're, you're great for the game. Uh, we're so delighted to have you here oh, in Reading you. for the 900 and to put in a performance like that it was just absolutely awesome I want to ask you how do you manage your time because you do live in Hong Kong yeah I do yeah but I also travel a lot because uh, we have different tournaments uh, in overseas like the next month I probably fly into uh, Australia for the Australian Open okay yeah wow. <laughs> is that and, um, difficult uh, no, I actually enjoy like traveling for tournaments because, like, we still remember the last two years. Uh, while there is a COVID time, and our government uh, not allow us to travel, because um, yeah, so so at that time I, I can only stay in Hong Kong practice, but no tournaments. And actually, some some of it uh, can only stay home, can't oh. even practice at the club. So yeah, I'm glad so I can travel a lot yeah. and be in the tournaments. And I suppose to you play with her. <laughs> <laughs> well, you felt like your progression, I suppose, uh, was was like kind of stalled and like paused for a little bit. But it's great to see you playing so well. And how about that, ladies and gentlemen? A twelve times uh, women's world champion and a three times <laughs> women's world champion. What is she like? I want to know on tour. What is Rianne Evans like? I paid you well, remember? <laughs> what was <what, what>, she? <laughs> Um, wow, she is always bullying me, and <laughs> no, 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 she is she's so nice, so mm. nice, and also a uh, very good snooker. Th that's why I lose to her. <laughs> no, but yeah, she always uh, like um, like a, a dominant player, dominant ladies player for for a long time. So mm. yeah, I always look up to her oh, and 
practice hard to <laughs> to compete with her as well. Yeah. Okay. Right. Well, <laughs> great to see you in the semi final tonight, <laughs> and uh, we'll be seeing on you very soon. She's going to be up against uh, Craig Stedman. She was a big prize in our last match, and she's seven uh, to two uh, to win uh, mm -hmm. the uh, next match against Craig Stedman. Right. So our first semi final of the night is Aidan Murphy, who was very cool and calm, and uh, then we've got um, Peter Devlin, who's eight to eleven, and Aidan Murphy even money. So let's get to the floor and to the commentary box. Uh, first up, it's uh, Lee alongside Billy. Thank you, Rachel. And welcome back, you lovely snooker fans. First semi-final here. And it's Peter Devlin and Aidan Murphy. Who do you fancy, Billy? Well, it's going to be another good game. Obviously, Aidan Murphy in the first game didn't do nothing wrong, made a brilliant safety and made a good 61 break. And obviously, Peter got through by the skin of his teeth against a good Joe Johnson so win for a good game I mean they're both looking in good nick and this is beyond the yellow is it oh that's how you dream for a break off like that and especially where the reds have gone as well Lee you know he's brought in six reds into play seven reds yeah and the blacks free it's just like a it's quite impressive um, of Aiden in the first game though he's put in a few difficult situations and he managed to find an answer for everything George had and this again he's left nothing that's a great shot. I mean, that's all he could do. He's he's left a thin chip here, Billy, but that's that's as best as you can ask for yeah. the, in the time you've got. And look, he's not he's not going to take it on. No, he's just too much. It. He's too well, He's got to be careful. He doesn't foul here. Yeah? This is awkward. It's not nice. Hit your cushion, Peter. Yeah, I was very impressed with Aiden. Like I said, you know, we see with Marcus Dale in the first week. You know, he won the qualifier same as Aiden. He turned up for a qualifier, won it. You know, he, so he's used to this format and he likes this format. And nobody's talking about him at all, Lee. Like what we've seen in the first game. You know, he's player of the rounds. And look at that. What a pot. I mean. It's just. Well, this table's rapid. I mean, it's. It's just a tremendous long pot, Billy, from anybody. Yeah, especially so. the way he was queuing on the cushion there. Oh, he's fouled. That's oh, a foul. he's fouled. It's a push yes. He's called a push on himself there. Well, we know where he's going to put the cue ball here. What's he doing? What's he doing? Now he's just creating a bit of room, I think. I know what you're thinking. Take the one above the black. But, um... Well, we're gonna have to, you're gonna have to get your camera out and tweak these. We've just been giving cupcakes. <laughs> they got our pictures on the top of them. <laughs> they managed to get my head on the well, top of a I would like cupcake. To say a big, big thank you to Ian with his wife Kerry made these cupcakes for us today. I mean, with our pictures on, a big shout out to them. And don't forget Danny. Danny's yeah, missus made us a load of <laughs> lemon drizzle. Danny and Emma also for the lemon drizzle they made us today. Should we talk about cakes instead of this? Because this is ABC for uh, Peter Devlin at the moment. Absolutely in perfect position here around the black spot. Yeah, that's that's how you sort of want them. I mean, Aiden's unfortunately uh, he's, he's you know he caught a push shot on himself. So he double hit the cue ball. That's a great chance for Peter here. Yeah, this is what he practices all day in Italy around this area, around these sort of situations. Yeah, every pro does. Or every full time player, I should say. Yeah, the nice shots to play on these tables when you can just play that shot with a bit of spin around the two cushions. It's so much easier on cloths like this and yeah. the way the table's running to play that shot. You play that on a club table, you're having to give it a bit of a bash. Oh, we see that earlier, Lee. It's <laughs> a nice little shot. He did miss a black earlier though when he was perfect against Joe Johnson, so he you don't want to be too complacent with these shots. He's taking his time. He's okay, he's got a nice little kiss there. 
gives me to think this might be a one visit, mate. Yeah, well, he's like I say, he's in good form, Peter. He's um got his mojo back. So we'll be seeing these players again on Wednesday night from in the semi-final. Yeah, I mean... Well, sorry, these players in the semi-finals, we'll be seeing them again on Wednesday for definite. So the, the first four round losers, Ben Hancorn, George Pragnall, uh, Joe Johnson and Paul DeVille, they'll all be playing tomorrow night's players that are coming in. Paul Fedden, Declan Lavery, Patrick Whelan and Lee Walker. It's not easy, is it? It's not no. easy, you know, you got Lee Walker coming in there. He's a top, top player. He won the World Amateurs. He won the World Seniors. And, you know, he's been on the main tour. He's been around, played at the Crucible. You know, then you got Declan Lavery, a multiple Northern Ireland champion. You got obviously um, Patrick Whelan coming in tomorrow night. He's a very, very good player. You might not know too much about him, but you know, I've been around a bit now and I've played Patrick a lot. He's a very, very good player. You know, capable of winning the tournament I believe this week okay obviously he's only got one bite of the cherry because he's a Tuesday night player and then obviously we've got Paul Fedden who's the Bermuda champion yeah let's see what they got you know the Spanish champion was pretty good last week so what is it that's perfect we see a 100 break here folks we could do He's got nine minutes left, a lot of time left in this frame yet. Just got a, is he just going to run into the red next and play the pink into the other middle? Maybe to the no, corner. No, he stunned it. You know, Peter's doing to Aiden what Aiden done to George in the first one. Yep. But you know, Aiden will be happy with the way he's queuing. Yeah, he's done nothing wrong at all. I mean, now he double pushed the cue ball there, but that's easy done on them shots. And he's had a good 60 yard break first visit. And it's Coco timely. Yep. Been looking forward to it all day, mate. So, is he chipping this into the middle? Again, again, another little, and he's left it, and there's eight minutes left. There's a chance of a, a counter dish. Billy. Yeah, there is a good chance there, Lee, of a counter clearance there. Obviously, we know Aiden's in good form. He wouldn't have been expecting a chance in this frame. Is it cocoa hot this week, Lee? <laughs> it, it, it is caught me out there but yeah you that's a nice little cannon that's a good cannon so this isn't a bad chance Billy no it's a good chance well he seems he's playing a lot of shots very confidently isn't he you know queuing right through the ball tonight he doesn't look like tentative at all, although I'd be taking the pink on there. Mm. Oh, he's missed. Yeah, as we say that, he's just got to miss the blue. But I would have took the pink on there, Lee. Yeah, I think the pink. Screwed across the face of the red for the middle yeah, pocket. Back into the opposite middle, yeah, I know. Yeah, I think uh, he sort of just got down and slapped at that one a little bit, didn't he? So, uh, But, um, yeah, yeah. I'm not, I don't want to be too critical tonight because he's... Uh, I've I've enjoyed watching him play. Oh, he's like this red run around the angles there. There is still time. Six minutes for uh, a fifty-six dish with fifty-nine on the table. I mean, you know, we've only done a maxi in five minutes. 20 odd seconds, Lee. Yeah, that's Ronnie. <laughs> that's Ronnie. <laughs> that's Ronnie, though, mate. <laughs> oh, 
So Peter's got to be careful here. Yeah, well he doesn't want to bring too many of these reds off the cushions because the clearance is on. If I even be having a go at this red. Yeah, you could do with pulling one out of the bag here. Not the best of kisses. No, that wasn't any need to eye a value colour because there's 54 points in it with 51 on the table. He can't be going. For, is he playing the safety or is he going for the yellow? Otherwise, I'll be playing the green. Yeah, I mean, I know he's got the yellow, but he does need a snooker. Yeah, I mean, he had to play the green there, surely. Yeah, or a long pink. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> yes, they, it'd be very tough to get a snooker in this sort of format with the time left. Yeah, well that could be that. Yeah, a little bit heartbreaking when you know you need a snooker after that. But I mean, th I thought the gr the green was very potable from off the top yeah, cushion. Yeah, I mean, he's already into Wednesday night's final as well. Yeah, this is just pocket money now. So this is just, like I say, pocket money pays for their expenses and puts a bit of money into their bank. Like I say, tonight's winner, folks, do get £500. The runner-up gets 250 So it's not like they're playing for nothing. Hey. Yeah, obviously, it no. all changed at the start of the frame when he got ball in hand. You know, Peter accumulated a nice 50-odd break. That looks very comfortable. How do you know? But Peter looks sharp. Yeah, he does. He's not going to give you too many chances. Got a yellow to the middle. That took off, didn't it? That's all yeah. I could have a little bit left hand side on that. Yeah, I've been down there tonight to watch a couple of frames, and the table looks absolutely rapid. You know, a lot of these players saying it looks like main TV arena tables. Yeah, that's how good it looks and playing. He's dropped that in dead weight yeah. as well. You're not getting a better amateur setup than this for an event, Lee, are you? No. Two fifty breaks if he clears up one frame. We had that before. Don't think so. He's overcooked it though. <laughs> Obviously, quick on his table. That cake better not be overcooked. I know that. Wow, he keeps staring at me. That looks like a that's edible on the top there, mate. Oh, oh, oh. So there you have it, folks. Peter Devlin, the first person through to tonight's final. We'll be back just after this break. Welcome back. Well, we're just approaching midnight here at the 900. It is cocoa time, whatever you're cheersing this evening. I hope you're uh, staying wide awake. We've got uh, so much entertaining snooker to come. And what a night it's been already, folks. Oh, I think it's been so high the standard. Every match has been entertaining. We've had a little bit of everything. Um, on years, the standout for me, I've, I've really impressed with the way she handled the situation. Before that, it would have been Aiden. And uh, yeah, I was just amazed. It's been a brilliant night. I mean, I didn't think it could be better than last mo last Monday, but it's mm. it is. I mean, I know we had the big dish last <laughs> Monday, but this has been brilliant night snooker. I mean, some frames, two visits, like Joe's nearly pulled it out of the bag. On you was faultless. I mean, it's yeah. who'd you pick? <laughs> well, who'd, who'd you, you pick? pick now? <laughs> <laughs> we have got a, a, the the next semi final uh, just around the corner with Craig Stedman two to five and on ye seven to four. Um, I mean, our viewers will be making up their own mind who they want to be back in. But what about you guys? Um, on ye, she's once again odds against and the outsider in this match. Yeah, well, I think I think Stedman's. To, to, I th I'm, I'm, I'd back on ye. On on the performances. Yeah. Most definitely, yeah. On ye. But on and the, on the yeah. prices. Yeah, but it's again it's. 
Aiden played really well, then losing out to Peter, they both switched reverse in the matches. Like one played well, one played bad, and yeah. then reverse. Yeah. So you never know. And then in even format. the even the the long red that um, Aiden's knocked in there, and then. Pulled the fat. Obviously, he's hit the yeah. white twice. Yeah. But the, what how red that was to get in. Exactly, so I mean, yeah. it's not like he's got to stay confident because he's hitting it lovely. Mm. So because he's going to be in a force on on Wednesday night for sure. Indeed, lots of more forces on Wednesday, of course. And we'll have new players coming in uh, tomorrow. We'll be doing the draw, which is uh, for us the most fun part of the <laughs> evening um, because we get get to see our matchups uh, for for tomorrow. Uh, lots of you've been getting in touch on Twitter, which is great. Hashtag the nine hundred. If you'd like us to read out yours, uh, Kieran Oldham. Says the Paul Deville to win the 900. Mark my words. Well, he's going to be back, of course, uh, with the chance at Snooker Legends. You can get in touch as well. Matthew Lester, what a performance from Aidan Murphy. Uh, that was our first match tonight, although it looked like a goalless draw. And uh, Malin, you don't need to play for position if you can pot like Joe Johnson quality match that was <laughs> earlier and Phil Hay just the final one Joe Johnson is absolute box office long potting machine we saw some real <laughs> magic from Joe Johnson certainly my highlight this evening along with them um, on ye he was fabulous wasn't he <laughs> I you just knew he was going to pop that blue and screw back and play the long red, you know, towards the end of that break. And I'm thinking, just run through, play he's for the red the top, underneath. Follow it through. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's, he's leaving the long balls all day long. He's <laughs> yeah. got some sweet as a nut. Yeah, he's practicing they them in the, in the practice room. <laughs> but, you know, it's absolutely, he was unlucky to lose, really, playing like that. If you play like that against anyone else, you probably win. Yeah, and it that, was just, that's the, this format, just the one safety shot on the yeah. yellow at the end. And, you know, Peter played a good yellow. Um, could only just in. get switched the green in. <laughs> yeah, we, we've all got a twitch in us. Peter's but, looking sharp, though, isn't he? Yeah, I think we might be getting closer to one of the all-time greatest raps, maybe on Wednesday, if he's <laughs> Possibly. To, to walk away with, with, with the, the title. <laughs> uh, if you're new to this game, you used to be a, a real popular snooker rapper, weren't you, Lee? No, <laughs> just not popular. <laughs> just a rapper. Just, but like, listen, he's good. He's he's good fun. He's good fun. So, but uh, I'm not sure about. Have his you given raps. up the rapping? No, I'm still strong. I'm still strong. That's why I don't want him to get in here and do one because I'll have to destroy him. <laughs> All right, I'm just like, bring it on. Uh, we will see, of course, uh, Joe Johnson uh, back again tomorrow, of course, at uh, the losers return and then we'll have our new players coming in. Uh, we'll have um, a senior world champion in, in Lee Walker, one of the players uh, coming in uh, tomorrow evening. Um, Mark Williams says his tip this week is anybody but Lee Walker. <laughs> He's 50 to 1 uh, to win it outright and, of course, a big prize as well to, to, to win, the, win the group. He's yeah. good. He's good enough. Sorry, Ryan. No, no, I agree. Um, he's more than capable. As I say, he's a steady player as well. So if he is playing well and he's he's in the balls, he's eating the clock down as well. And that's that's a, one of the bonuses of being a steady, slowish player, isn't it? If you're playing well, this format is brilliant for you. Listen, he sees the shot straight away. He just takes his time. Well, Peter Devlin's already through to tonight's final. Who'll be joining him? Uh, they think that Onyi is uh, overpriced. She's 7-4 to four against uh, Craig Stedman, who's 2-5 uh, to five for a place in tonight's final. We're going to go back to the arena. By the way, if you've got a clever name for our arena, if you would like to send in your suggestions, keep it clean. <laughs> Let's join uh, Billy Castle first up in the commentary box. Yes, thank you, Rachel. Welcome back, folks. Our second semi-final of this evening between Onyi and Craig Stebland. You know, what a, what a standard so far tonight. It's been absolutely brilliant every game. And um, I've been so impressed with Onyi. And joining me is Rianne. Rianne, obviously, you must be impressed with Onyi the way she started off. Yeah, of course. Um, we all know that she can play. She's a multiple world champion, multiple ranking event winner got a lot of experience but it's under this format and this pressure and uh, she said how nervous she was which I was a little bit surprised I mean you expect nerves but I didn't expect her to be as nervous as she was but I think maybe that helped her focus more on what she was doing on the table but yeah. she's in with a chance straight away here I think yeah Craig obviously hit that red too thick and he's coming into the reds and left on near chance but I believe it's a nice place she's playing at I mean, at the minute on you, you know, because sometimes I believe matches and situations can bog her down a little bit, maybe. Or, but this pace suits her. She's just getting on with it, and um, yeah, she looks like she's doing the ball well. I just think if you play like three or four seconds quicker, you're not overthinking things. You're not thinking about things that can go wrong or questioning what you what you want to do. You see the first shot, and 
generally it's the right shot. So yeah, I mean that only comes obviously if you're in good. Normally, when you're in good form and you're feeling good about yourself, yeah. you play that natural speed anyway. But it's when everything goes wrong in snooker, you start overthinking stuff and what can go wrong, and um, you don't feel confident on certain shots. The mental side of this game is frightening, isn't it? It's yeah. It's so much between the ears. We've all got this ability and the, the skill, and there's so many really good players, but it's who can handle the mental side of it more. Yeah, definitely. But she's she's got the pace of this table. She's the only shot that she struggles with is the safety shots, like the figure of eight with the side catching them a little bit thick. Yeah. But she's, yeah, like I say, she looks she looks in great form. Obviously, you know, you've given her beating must, her at the weekend must have spurred her on. Got a backup, <laughs> <hadn't> I? <laughs> Yeah. She can she screw into the red on the outside of the pack here and over to the one? I think she's just going to play a plain ball pot here. Once she managed to stun into it. Yeah, I think she needs a little bit more screw yeah. on the ball there to a hold it. A little bit in. lower on the cue ball there. But she has got a red to the middle, she's just got a drop in. Yeah, she might try and screw across the face of the blue here, but it's a tough shot if she does. That's a lovely shot. Beautiful shot. Lovely position. She's loving this format. Yeah, I've been very impressed with her. I have said it to a couple of people, you know, I feel like she's very overpriced, even in her matches and even to win the overall week. That needs oh. to slow up. She did it too good. This she table is so quick. I think she's striking the ball too well at the moment. Yeah. She's hitting the ball too clean. Just a pure strike. And obviously you say this table is so nice and grippy. It's gonna exaggerate the reaction, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, you don't need to touch the cube on this table at all. Because you don't want to get that white closer to the the ball yeah. crail though. Sorry, he's got a big target here. Yeah. Again. Yeah. It's very good at these shots. Yeah. You just caught the brown? No. Oh, nice gaps. Yeah. Again, yeah, we were on a bit earlier. Those are the little flicks you need. Yeah, Maybe certainly. She might have a shot to nothing here, though. Just be careful, doesn't it? Thick and just catch that other red. Played that well. Even Billy gave it a tap <laughs> of the table. <laughs> yeah, she played that well. I mean, I've been so impressed with her, like I said, so far. It's been a good night of snooker so far, Rianne. The standard has been very high in every match. Um, even when it's gone to the wire, they've had to pull out some good good pots and twitch them in, but yeah. that's all the drama and the entertainment we love of this 900. Yeah, yeah, it's been very good standard tonight and we've had all, all drama already, we've had good breaks. She's confident, yeah. she's, she's got straight down on this. I'm, I won't be, I think I'll be playing safe here, Bill. Yeah, you know, she's very, she must be confident in what she's doing out there. Wow. What do I know? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> She's just knocked it in like it was over the hole. They're not easy pots, them. She's just feeling good, isn't she? She's yeah. like, As I said, she's seen the ball well. She just thinks she can pot everything. Yeah. And she is. Yeah. It's amazing when you're in that sort of bubble where you, you're you playing that well and you, know, you get to the table and you feel like everything's... You're going to pot. You know, the pockets seem bigger, the ball seems smaller. <laughs> and, you know, that's what she's seeing at the moment. Every day is totally different, isn't it? Every frame yeah. is totally different. Just didn't get the nicest of kisses there. So yeah. good safe shot behind the green. Yeah. Right on the ball crail. She caught it a little bit thick. Yeah, just a touch thick there. She caught the red. You know, say Peter's in the final tonight, so he's guaranteed himself. Two hundred and fifty pounds. So yeah, it's pay for it. Like I say, it pays for your expenses. Oh, and he just caught that other red first. Yeah. Yeah, she doesn't need to take one of these reds on. She doesn't have to go for it. She's just feeling so confident, isn't she? And she potted one of these earlier in in the frame before. Yeah, I fancy her cueing this in off two cushions. Oh, she oh. punched it in. Yeah, I thought she might just. The way she's queuing, just run it around off the two cushions, and she's left this red. 
Need that tight on the cushion. Oh, oh. maybe not. Craig nearly thought he won the lottery there, didn't he? <laughs> no, he's <laughs> walking around. He was walking around like uh, he, the red was going to finish for him. Obviously, that when you're playing well and it's going for them, them sort of things happen. You know, if she was up against it and losing the frame, she'd have left that red over the pocket. Exactly, yeah. So the snooker god's work, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But again, Craig knows there's still eight and a half minutes left. 36 point lead. It's not that good where the balls are, really. They're all really nicely placed. Yeah, and a lot of time. I mean, Craig had a. He was 30 odd behind in the last round to An Ben Ancorn, you know, and found a way to come back and win. So if he gets in amongst these balls, you know, that deficit will so soon be wiped out. See that shot there? He should have clipped that thin, not playing yeah. the thick shot and playing the thick shot. She's opened all the reds up. Left a chance for Craig now. Oh, if he'd have got away out of there, she could have been in big trouble. But so I say, still a long time left with the with the reds are. I'm sure Craig's going to get opportunity. And say, so would you get the blue or the pink out here? Yeah, I think he's playing the blue. Yeah, listen to her talk. She loves travelling, and um, Australia's next to that woman's another woman's tournament. Yeah, I think it's um, in October is the next one. Yeah, but she so just loves snooker. She loves everything about it. Yeah, well, she was in Sweden only a week ago playing in the Q Tour event. You know, so she's all over playing. Yeah, she's a massive star in Hong Kong as well. Yeah, she's very big over there, and rightly so. She's three-time world champion, and you should get all the recognition you deserve. Yeah, certainly. That was a nice crisp pop. The Craig's got a good chance now. It's perfect. Or not any of these colours come back down for these reds. I'd be tempted by the blue just to run it on off the bottom cushion. Because that shot, you kind of leave yourself a little bit of a distance away from the next reds. He didn't put that clean at all, did he? No. So he's got to be yeah, careful because the black doesn't. Short. Yeah, the black doesn't go in the left pocket. It's pressure on this one here. Yeah, it's a big shot. And he didn't play it in a confident way. These shots are very missable. He thought he'd miss that, didn't he? Oh, he wiped his feet. Used all of the pocket. I suppose that's what they're there for, Bill. Yep. Yeah, we see some of them uh, in over the years that, that have just rattled and stayed out. And on another day, they just, you know, they go, they go in. He's not quite got in perfect position yet in this break, Craig. He's always chasing. Look, isn't he? He's yeah. always that little bit awkward. Even this shot again, you know, this is another good cue in shot. We've got to keep his own body still. His head's got to stay still in this shot. You have to trust your cue action, don't you? And just push that cue through and hope it's in that nice straight line you're hoping for. Yeah, these, like I say, you can leave the cue across these. There we go. I just fancy him missing something there. Yeah, not not because you think he's going to miss, just because everything's just awkward. Yeah, he just, he was a couple of shots shots away from getting in perfect position but you know once you're out of position once you know it takes some getting back into on a snooker table again that was really well struck yeah she's got like I say she's got the pace of this table absolutely perfect the way she's played that shot Everything seems to be timed really well at the moment. Striking yeah. the cue ball really well. So she's got a 23 point lead. Four and a half minutes left. Yeah, I can't see her making a mistake from here, Ian. The way she's playing. She literally got to keep the white ball in the middle of the table. And she's won, hasn't she? Yeah. You know, she played this red now, red in the middle. 
back on the pink. She's decided to play for the red, white, and black. She's not got side on this cue ball. You know, as we just say, <laughs> she's, she's probably played the worst shot of the night she's played. Yeah, she's in it. Roll the blue in. She's got the red to the middle there. Yeah, and I'm with you. Less movement on that cue ball, the better. Yeah. This is now turned into a big shot. Yeah, mm, that's she why she refused it. She refused to pot there because it was tough. But Craig's going to bring this red into play, yeah? And a 29 point lead. It's still time. This looks pretty good. I think it just topped the cue ball onto the black cushion. Yeah, that's a off shot. Off the first red. Yeah. Just dump the white down onto the bottom cushion there. Yeah, that black gun over there, she won't mind. No, make it a little bit messy. Make Cray think he's got more work to do than he than he has really. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, Craig just doesn't want the cue ball running away of him too much, especially with not a lot of time left. Again, can't really play the dump shot here because that red in the m by the middle pocket. Unless you can get into the near the jewels of the black pocket. Yeah, so what she might be well she could find her way back to Bolt there, it's a brilliant shot. Oh that's a great shot. There's yeah. a little bit of uh, that red in the way there, so she hit that really well. Yeah, and obviously she missed the yellow on the way back up as well. This is a big shot now though. <sighs> wow. I should have said it too good. I might be tempted to play the brown, to be honest. But he's played it well. But that's, I think that's player's preference. Some people like to punch the ball, don't they? Yeah. Rather than rolling the ball in. and That's yeah. why sometimes you can't say it was the wrong shot. You say they prefer to play, isn't it? Yeah, certainly. I mean, this is the right red to clear now. Yeah. Just let that run a Did little bit. Tempted by the black ball there. Yeah? We might be tempted by the black ball because he's got to get on with it. And he can't be taking two or three, four feathers there. He's just got to get down as quick as he can there, Rihanna, because time will soon run away. He he's is going to need up to the green probably if he takes. One minute 20, and he's 19 behind. 11. Oh, this is definitely on. Take the pink here. Seventeen. She's twelve points behind now. So either way, he's going to need up to the green or brown. 18. This is going to be close, you know. Yeah. Well, he's taking the blue one, so he definitely needs a brown. Yeah. Oh. oh, this is not good. It's okay. Seven. Let's hurry up. I don't know why he's taking so many feathers. That's perfect. Well, he's definitely going to leave it late, Ryan. I think he's going to get the job done. Cool customer, wasn't it? He's done it to Ben, now he's going to do it to on ye. Wow. There we have it. Craig Stebbins has won it right at the death. Unlucky on you. We will see her on the finals night. Congratulations to Craig. We'll see him shortly. We'll just take a short break and we will be back. Welcome back, folks. Uh, so great to have your company. Uh, so late in the night. Uh, we're having a lot of fun here, but it's been high quality stuff so far this evening. Um, in incredible, actually. It looked like um, on you was going to pull off uh, another perfect frame, but it was Craig Stebbin who, who got back at her. There was always going to be a twist in that one, Rhianne, it felt. Yeah, you just felt it was coming, even though on you was playing great and striking the cue ball like a dream. Um, she just 
a few safety shots I let her down, not a potting. It was a safety shot to open the balls too much and then obviously Craig cool as a cucumber in that break there to finish it off for a fantastic break. And well incredible considering the the tip he has <laughs> on his cue. I did get to see a picture of it. It's not even Honestly you've it's never the seen worst anything I've ever like seen it. actually. It's like someone's just took it out of the box and gone like that, stuck it on and walked away. That's done. <laughs> It's working. <laughs> Unreal. Yeah. It's working. I mean, to, to be honest, I thought she had it wrapped up. Mm. It was just a couple of times where she could have put a ball on a cushion and, you know, it's, those edgy frames that the, you know, the sort of older players get. The sort of, just, That's just, what I mean. I think she was thinking about the shot clock time. a little bit too much yeah. where it'd take like, three or four extra seconds. Should be, she had plenty of time. Yeah, I think if she'd have been playing in a table. match, she would have put them safe and stuff. Yeah. But I think the shot clock just caught her out a smidgen it's, it's mm. tough though isn't it uh, because we've seen players you know make a nice break and get the lead I in the frame and in this case in, in the match but then suddenly you've got so much time it's yeah. it, it's it's quite a difficult yeah. situation to be in I mean it's lovely to have the lead but when you've got so much time left that was still a great clearance that Craig's put in there that I mean that's that's bottle and he timed it to glass. perfection didn't he yeah few seconds I mean, left but yeah we were saying this the lo long dish. way around the table he, yeah. <laughs> he had it all yeah. worked out with the time and everything but sometimes when you walk that way i always used to watch jimmy he always walked the long way around the table because you can walk into your shot at certain angles you know, so you, you don't prefer have to, to come in from the left or the right or something. Yeah, yeah so yeah. you 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 know, if you're rather than walk underneath the black, sometimes he used to walk around the table just so he, if he's on the pink, just so he could walk into the shot without anybody noticing you walk into the shot. And that's mm. actually something I remember he told um, Zha Jun Tong when he won the UK Championship oh. to, to to do a longer walk around and I suppose gather your your thoughts. His composure as well. As exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, right. We're ready for the draw. Mm. We've got, of course, uh, new players joining us uh, tomorrow. The losers will be back. And are we ready? I'm ready. Good. Are you ready? Born ready. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> right. Number six. Number six is Joe Johnson, our legend this week, the 1986 world champion. He absolutely dazzled us tonight with his long potting. Joe will play. Number three. Number three from Northern Ireland, a good player, Declan Lavery. <laughs> Joe Johnson, Declan Lavery. I think we're kind of going to go... Yeah, there okay. you go. That order. <laughs> she's, she's hard work. I'll tell you. Well, it's you again. OK, second match. Number seven. Number seven is a Ben Hancorn, of course, went all the way to the grand final in season one. And Ben will play... Number five. Number five, George Pregnell. Oh, oh. that is horrible. Oh, you've <laughs> done it again. <laughs> Number four. Number four is uh, Paul Fedden, who's uh, flying the flag for Bermuda. 15 countries rep represented in season two. And Paul Fedden will play... Number two. Number two, Patrick Whelan from Sheffield. He's a regular Q Tour player. And our final match... Number eight. ...is Paul Deauville. What a horrible match this is as well. Yeah. Number one. Lee Walker. The world seniors champion. So um, great lineup tomorrow. Uh, this is always looking like it was kind of a blockbuster, block, blockbuster week. Sorry, it's late. I'm too much cocoa. <laughs> uh, such strength and depth. I mean, it just, just, just don't get any easier tomorrow night, does it? I mean, the 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 match there is Ben Ancorn and George Pragnell shortly followed by Lee Walker and Paul Deville. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're too tough. Even the other two aren't nice either, are they? But, um, yeah, I mean, they're not going to be happy with you, especially. Um, <laughs> tough, tough draw. Yeah, Ben. Ben's thinking, what have I done this what, week? Yeah, what have I done? <laughs> <laughs> I've got, got George and Craig first rounds. But I mean, that's, that's, hopefully that who's watching, draw. whoever's watching tonight will be joining us tomorrow night. But if you were to pick out one player, one match that you'd be... Who are you strong on? One match. For, give us a bet. I'm having Ben Ancorn. OK. Uh, I go Lee Walker. All oh, right. Ben Ancorn, Lee Walker. And those matches will be priced up in the morning. Yes, I got the nod. <laughs> <laughs> nod from the boss, uh, Jason Francis. So uh, priced up in the morning, you can get involved uh, with the ACA. You can also get involved, by the way, with our final tonight. It's Peter Devlin, 13 to 10, up against Craig Stedman, who's 4 to 7. Have the book book he's got this right, do you think? I don't know. I think I'm back in as much as I love Steads. I, I, at those prices, I've got to go Peter Devlin. Head over heart then? Yeah. OK. Yeah, but Peter's played well as well. He's sort of grown into the format. He's played a little bit better each each frame. So, look at the draw, but yeah. Steads has played well both matches. 
at the end of the matches, though, hasn't yeah, he? He's had course, to like, do all saying, the hard work. Yeah, you're then... saying Devlin could just get in and kill it off yeah, straight yeah. away. Yeah, so maybe. we're both with Devlin over yes. there? Yeah. All right. The outsider then in our final 13 to 10. It's going to be an absolute treat. And uh, it's coming up in just a couple of minutes' time. See you soon. So welcome back, snooker fans. This is the final night one of week two of the second season of 900. And we have got Peter Devlin versus Craig Stedman. And I'm joined by the 12-time world champion and 12-time UK champion, Rhianne Evans. Yeah, I just thought I'd make it simpler with the numbers yeah, so you yeah. didn't forget how many it was. Yeah. But, yeah. You know what my memory's like. <laughs> You know, two former professionals head to head on the first night of week two. And both, bo sorry, both done well to get here. Yep, both played some good stuff. What a pot! He's just carried on after that dish. But that helps. He's just come off the table. Yep. And he's straight back on. That's a big, big plus, isn't it? It's a big advantage. And really, this is the first time he's been in first with a decent chance. Yeah, but he's run out of position now, though. Oh, um, I think he might have one into the middle. I, or think, not. I, I think one goes in the middle, yeah. No. no. <laughs> it's tight, isn't it? Good safety shot here, though. If he's covered that, he's lucky. Didn't play it great, did he? No, I'm so He wanted to hit it on and off the cushion. He, did, he wanted to miss the black with the red. So, chance for Peter Devlin with a red over the pocket. In between colours there. Yeah, I think it was a nasty angle, wasn't it? But I think he can just pop this, bounce it on and off the cushion. No. He's thin. That was a, a tentative attempt, wasn't it? Yeah, he's kind of played it at the pace where if you get it close, it stays in the jaws, but he wasn't close enough. No, he's always going to leave some sort of pot on anyway, I think. So I think you have to go full-blooded and... I mean, he's, he's been queuing really well as well, so you've got to trust your technique and yeah. be confident. The reds aren't good here, though. He might play to go into them. I think... No? Oh... oh. He's under it, that one. I was thinking maybe he could play into the cluster of three there. Yeah, I'd, I'd have been tempted for the bigger bigger part of the pack, you know, and go in with some pace. It's not too bad on this, though. Is it Missed thick? it. Yeah. Poor positional shot there. So they've not been as clinical. You think the pressure would be off now, though? Yeah, they, you know, they're, both they're definitely they both through. nicked a few quid. They're playing yeah. on Wednesday night, so they got a night off tomorrow. This looks a bit pacey. Yeah, that little bit aside, maybe put that extra bit of a couple of rolls on the cue ball. Yeah, I mean, there should be just absolutely no pressure on this match at all, apart from you're, you're playing to win an extra 250 quid over the other person. Yeah. I suppose it's always nice, you know, your your night one of week two winner, but the winner only matters on Wednesday night. Yeah, I suppose it's a mental thing, though. You're going in a lot more confident. You're going in as a winner. You haven't lost. Do you yep, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Different mentality. You're feeling a lot better about yourself. It's like when you you know you've won the end of the frame, but you want to clear the roller balls up to make yourself feel good. Yeah. Oh, Ooh. there you go. Now that is not going to make him feel good. Definitely not. Right, this is your area now. Let me let's have a little look. You're gonna slate him no matter what he does. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Craig. <laughs> no, he's uh this red, getting rid of this one clears the black to go in this pocket later in the break. So this this is I think this is a good shot. You know, he's perfect on the blue now. So well not perfect on the blue, far, he's gone a bit he? far. But um I think he put it in the right position, to tell you the truth, because I think it cl now the black goes. Yep. So you let him off with that I, one? I let him off as long as he doesn't miss this blue. And he's just blocked the black pack up. 
So he's still in though, he's still in. And all through last season as well, we didn't see many people make breaks off ball in hand. No. No, it was it was poor. Maybe that's why my blood pressure went up so much. That's a nice shot. I mean, all right, he's overhit it, but it's so easy to want to hit that thick to hold the white ball. It's a pet peeve, isn't it? You know you're going to do it and you try and say, yeah, aim thin, aim thin, yeah, but you still yeah. do it. So again... So we just made 12 from that position. I know, but 12 from ball in hand. But, you know, he just overhit the first... The, the thing is, you've got to go top side of blue, haven't you? He didn't have the best kiss when he went into the pack. The thing with Craig, he, he just keeps losing the cue ball. He's, yeah. he's always awkward, close to the cushion. Yeah, and you can't do a lot. No, but you're going to miss eventually, aren't you? Exactly, yeah. But Peter would be delighted that he's, he's only 30 points behind after that visit. He's still nine and a half minutes on the clock. Yeah. I don't think we'll see Craig pushing the boat out much here. See, that's, that a, well. that's a tough shot on this table. Yeah. You know, the way it pushes, it's, that's not an easy shot. No, he's, he's struck that well. Connected with the object ball really well, hasn't he? And again, that's a nice shot. Yeah, he stayed down on the shot a long time there, didn't he? Just Making sure the pink wasn't in, make sure he didn't clip the black. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because this is horrible now. He's just that bit, bit closer to the to the cushion. Normal frame of snooker, you're aiming to hit this really thin, like near enough miss it, yep. to make sure you get back up. Yeah. But in this format, you, you, you're wary of doing that. So this is a good line. Ooh. So close to being perfect. Still got to catch this well, though. Is he playing the one nearest the black, black spot? Black spot, yeah. Oh no. I was going to say, you've got to be wary no that you don't flukes. push one over. No, he's left it. Yeah, he's not happy. He's you don't have time to come and look where the balls are going to go, do you? With it In this format. Normally, you'd be walking around the table saying, if I cannon that there, that's going to go towards the pocket. You just like hit and hope sort of thing, don't you? Yeah, you see the disappointment in Peter Devlin there. So, you know, th I mean... Th you can't get too down on yourself because you've got Wednesday. It's all about Wednesday. Except for the players playing tomorrow. It's all <laughs> about tomorrow. <laughs> it's all about their first match tomorrow. So he's not exactly running the clock down now, is he? And he's got a nice lead. So he could slow down a little bit if he wanted, but he's overhit that because I'm sure he played for the blue. Yeah, definitely. But you don't want to be out your comfort zone either. You need to, yeah. if you can, play to your natural pace. Just walk a little bit slower to the ball, maybe. Now that's a good shot. He struck that well, didn't he? Beautiful. You were the crisp in the, yep. the connection. Smack the back of the leather. And you need to hit the ball really nice, time it really well on these these tables. Under it, that one. But you know, it's not easy with that cue ball. He heard you, Lee's. <laughs> yeah, he's watching the <laughs> clock now. Yeah, you don't miss a trick, Steads. He is a great lad, though. He got to get on with most people on the circuit, doesn't he? Yeah, I would have thought so, yeah. We've had plenty of nights out. <laughs> Probably why I'm sat here now. <laughs> oh, nice cannon. Everything looks so much easier when you you think you've won <laughs> the comfort zone. Everything looks so much easier when you're in the comms box. <laughs> We've got to try and get 
if he comes to if he does go on to win this, we've got to get him in the studio to try and get his tip out. I mean, people need to see it <laughs> to see what a disgrace it, it is. It is. It is an absolute disgrace. There's people on Twitter <laughs> screaming. <laughs> Has he done that himself or someone? I, I don't know. I don't know. Listen, it's, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Well, I mean, it's working. I'm surprised when you cure off the cushion, which he has done a lot tonight. How is it not coming off? I don't. I, I honestly don't know how he's. I want to know which is the top and which is the bottom. Because he's got he's you most players hold it in the same place all the time, don't they? Yeah. sure that's going to be a handshake there we go folks so tonight it's Craig Stedman is your champion tonight and uh, we'll get him in the studio next after this short break Welcome back and the first winner of the week is Craig Stedman he joins us uh, in the studio and well done Craig terrific snooker but it's not been the snooker that everyone's been talking about it's the tip on that cue you've got to talk me through this because I have no clue what's going on there you've got can you see that <laughs> Look at it. He got a, millim a millimetre hanging over this side and three millimetre hanging over this side. Well, that looks level, that to, that looks level to me. How? All of it. <laughs> it's just shocking. I, just, I only cue down the arrows, so it just hangs over a little bit so I can see it. I don't really care about the other side. I don't look down that bar at the cue. When you're, when you're getting older and your eyes are going, when you put it on, that looks all right to me. Well, m mine have completely gone and it looks terrible to me. <laughs> that's, that's just abysmal. No, if you if, if you look down the arrows, if you cue down them, it just overlaps a little bit. The other side's irrelevant. A little bit. <laughs> yeah, I understand what Where you're saying. Where did you put that tip on? Uh, good Lord. I don't know, six months ago, maybe. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm not one for all these new tips, what I made out of. Bull skin and pig skin, and yeah. You know, Did just, you see the round going on last it night? Was, it was about 50p, it was an outmaster, it's fine. I just stick it on I the floor. I didn't know they it. still existed. Well, there you go, I've been around a long time, Lee. <laughs> I thought that was just like um, an emergency situation or no, something. No, I've always had, I've always had like a, the overhang just so I can see it. If, if, if that's flush and I look down here, I feel like I'm, I'm going to miss Q all the yes. time. I just, I just like to see it. Now, I know it's not straight all the way through, but like I say, I only look down there. I yeah, Stefan Mazrosis used to have it like, have yeah, it like so this. He's, the a, big he's one. an old boy like me. Yeah. That's what you <laughs> yeah, need. Yeah, yeah well, they well were, done anyway, mate. Tonight, well done. Yeah, you were mustard. Yeah, you were good. Well, it would be nice to not go 40 <laughs> behind and have to clear up with about two minutes left. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, it was good. It was good. The table's like lightning. <laughs> it's so quick. Um, you know, it'd be a joy to play on if you were playing like best of 19, you've got a feel for yeah, it. Yeah. But you know, with a clock and you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Chuck, it's, it's super fast, but it's beautiful. And like I said, I think these extra matches, I know look, whether you win or lose after your first match coming back Wednesday, which is like the, the crunch day, but the more you can play on it because it is really quick, you know, we'll see on Wednesday whether it helps me out or not. <laughs> See if Jason lets me have a knock on it tomorrow. Yeah, You've got no chance of that. Oh, he's, but, he's shaking the head. But at least, no. you, at least you can, you know, you can, at least you can, you can come in and have a go with the ball. Yeah, with, yeah. With a spotted yeah, ball, because you I, don't I, like it, do you? No, I, I, I don't dislike it. It just makes me feel like I want to hit where the <laughs> spots are. So, like, I want to put my tip on the spot every time. I was just trying my best to blank it out. But it worked tonight. <laughs> I mean, it was brilliant. You played really well. I mean, what did you think? What, how did you feel while you were conditioning against Onye? Were you, were you yeah, feeling right. it? I felt all right. I'd kind of given up because she was so far in front. <laughs> a few minutes left. I had a long red to go at. And when it went in, then I thought, oh, well, I've got half a sniff now. And, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, you feel a bit jangly. But no, I didn't really think about it too much. And as I say, the shot clock doesn't come into it that much, 20 seconds. I didn't really look at the shot clock. No. Not much. But just, you were perfect on every... I just tried to play it yeah. as if I was playing. Do yeah. you know what I mean? And, and forget about it. Do you feel, it. Craig, with this format that you can actually play your natural game more? Uh, to a degree. More so than the shootout, anyway. Um, yeah, I think the shootout is not too bad when it's 15 seconds, but when it gets to 10, that's really quick, for, mm -hmm. you know, for, for anybody, really. <laughs> and if someone plays a good safety shot, you, you know, you haven't, got, you haven't got time to look at anything. You've just got to kind of have a laugh. But the 20 seconds there, I think if you get someone gets you in trouble, you, you've got a little bit of time to have a look around. It's just about not... It's kind of forgetting that it's 20 seconds and just if you kind of play naturally. I think everybody's all right under 20 seconds, yeah. to a degree. yeah. But, yeah, it didn't really bother me tonight. Well, well, like I said, we'll see you on Wednesday, won't we? Well, we will, and we're looking forward to having you back on Wednesday and, of course, uh, a chance to get your name on the wall. 
Well, I feel like I've got to go and put a new tip on now. You're all bullying me. <laughs> I'm going to do it for you. <laughs> <laughs> I did actually say, well, well, let's talk about his tip when he comes in. I thought like this was just like popped on this morning. But when you it's say fine. six we'll months... We'll go down and I'll show you what I mean. On I, the know table. You, when you look I, listen, down the I know what you mean, but it's ludicrous. Well, I think it's all right. Listen, it's not too not too shabby. You're... Your snooker was good. Um, how much practice are you doing at the minute? Uh, quite a bit. The last since um, since like August after the World Championships, uh, I lost, and then I played in the Q school and didn't get through, and I didn't really play for a little bit after that, and I'm kind of wondering iron what to do. Um, but yeah, you know, I decided to carry on playing after I'd spoke to a, you know a few people close to me, and um, I played quite a lot since then. You know, I practiced quite a lot and I've had a lot of matches. Um, and I, I feel, you know, all right. I feel all right. Good. It's kind of just getting your head together again, isn't it? Yeah, we'll it? see. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, right. Well, congratulations. Thank um, you. A few um, quid in, in the bin as well, which is good. Yeah, it always helps, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and uh, he'll I need be it back. for tips. <laughs> <laughs> Not the tips you're putting on. <laughs> uh, right. Tomorrow, uh, we will have more fun in store for you here at the 900. It's uh, week two, season two, and night two. This is the lineup Joe Johnson and Declan Lavery. We did the draw just a few minutes ago. Uh, ben Hancorn and George Pragnell. Uh, Paul Fedden and Patrick Whelan and Paul Deville up against uh, Lee Walker of course we've got um, new players joining us and the losers from tonight they'll get another chance but of course the players that come in which is absolutely crucial with this format they get one bite of the cherry just one chance the likes of, of Lee Walker and um, the likes of Declan Laver who's been uh, drawn against uh, Joe Johnson Yeah I think uh, you, know, you know they all play all the time so I'm not I'm not worried about any of them having one bite of the cherry, um, especially someone like Lee Walker, who's got his cue in his hand all day long, every day. So, you know, I'm not... He's going to play well. You just know he is. And, Rianne, with um, a player like Lee, um, you know, we look at the average shot time on, on tour and, listen, Lee, will he's not the quickest. He's no. definitely not the <laughs> fastest and he's not got a great record in the shootout. I know that much. But with Onyi, you know, we, we've spoken a little bit about her and, you know, maybe she's a little bit more methodical um, than, than some players. Um, but... This format, she she just took to it like a dream. Yeah, I think, as she said, she got good advice from Dave, ex-professional, a lot of experience. Uh, she's also got other coaches like Wayne Griffiths as well. Again, to have good people in your corner, giving you good advice is always a good thing. And she, she took it all in, got the experience of it all, and it worked well. And I was like, really impressed with how she handled it because I, I, that was the one thing I thought she would worry about not the atmosphere or the mm. pressure of it Time. just the shot clock but it's not it's not the shootout so it is 20 seconds yeah and that just gives her that little bit of confidence maybe that you haven't got to run around like a headless chicken mm -hmm. it's 20 seconds all the way through it's not 15 and then down to 10 like craig said where you where you've got if you're in a bit of bother you've got no chance to look you have to just lash out at something yeah. So I think that probably gave her a little bit of confidence. Absolutely. And um, we say it so many times on this show, is it just pop the balls? <laughs> Sounds so easy. <laughs> it, just, it really does. But it's also critical thinking. And maybe with experience uh, with that, maybe Lee Walker will will come come good. Yeah, he w I'm, I'm sure he will. Mm. Yeah, okay. I, I fancy him to do well, yeah. yeah. Yeah? You haven't tipped him, though? No. No. You? No, but this, you know, I might tomorrow. I might change my mind tomorrow. <laughs> and do you know who else hasn't tipped him? Mark Williams. Mark Williams. He says anybody but Lee Walker. Yeah, but he knows. <laughs> he knows. <laughs> He's just having us all at it. He just wants you to do something terrible so he, he can, so he can rib him for the next yeah, year. Yeah. Uh, Joe Johnson, by the way, um, if you were tuning in earlier, he was absolutely... Oh sublime with his long potting brilliant to see him play so well and he's already booked in a slot here in the club tomorrow to practice <laughs> he's that keen he's eager you never let, you never let on, nice on the practice that, table <laughs> so I'm surprised you played that well <laughs> yeah, but listen his, his potting was his, but he's always been the same at all the seniors events every time he turns up he always pots them off the lampshades so, uh, yeah, there's no change from him it's apart lovely. from he's another year older <laughs> I know, 71 he's um Maturing like a fine I wine. Mean, <laughs> can you play like that at 71? And he looks really well. Oh, yeah, he pretty... does look really well, doesn't he? Yeah. So okay. he's going to be back tomorrow um, for who knows mm -hmm. how long. But um, he could be very much uh, joining us on Wednesday night. But uh, it's Declan Lavery uh, in his way. The highlight for you this evening, guys, tonight? Craig Stedman's tip. <laughs> Let's go. Let's I've go. got to go on you. She oh, was she was fantastic. She was mustard. She was yeah, mustard. Yeah. I thought the one bagel. Of you, I thought one of you might mention those lovely cakes that. Oh yeah, <laughs> Billy. What are their names? The two lovely ladies that make the cakes tonight. Kerry and Emma. Kerry and Emma. 
Thank you so much for those <laughs> cakes. It's the first time we've I ever mean, had a cupcake no eating our own pictures. <laughs> on, which is a bit <laughs> Just, weird. Anyways, nobody at home needs to know any of this. Um, it's been a pleasure bringing you the 900 once again here from the Reading, uh, from Reading in the Crucible. And uh, hopefully we'll have you with us tomorrow night uh, from Lee, Rianne and myself. Good night and sleep well. Bye bye.